Hello, hello, hello. Still need to press a bunch of buttons here. Um, so give me a second. At this time, I'm like properly live, right? You guys are here, I'm here. You can hear me. The music is not too loud, and if it is, let me know. Do you hear me fine? All right, so. Nice, 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 nice. So how are you guys doing while I'm still clicking buttons here? Remember the same as, as in the last stream. Um, the goal is for you, for you guys to ask questions. Um, it's only a secondary goal to finish the project that we're building. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, just give me a second. I'll, 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 I'll explain everything. In fact, I think I just, I just finished setting everything up. I think we're good. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah, we're good. So, hi. <laughs> All right. Um, um, Two weeks ago, I had a live stream uh, where we built a tiny thing that I called Money Calculator. It's just a thing to track expenses uh, with multiple currencies and stuff. And there was a V2, and um, you know we want to like uh, fetch currencies from you know fetch the rates from some service, and you know do some cleanup. Um, we're gonna write everything down right now, like everything that we want to do today. So basically, the goal is like to keep like um, uh, building out this this tiny hacky uh, thingy. And uh, like, the, like, the, but this is only a secondary goal, right? The the main goal is for for beginners to ask questions, right? Because the the previous the entire live series that that we had before, uh, you know, was the rewrite of the uh, of the shopping cart application from the book Practical Functional Programming in Scala by Gabriel Volpe. It was it was advanced, right? It was a tagless final thing, uh, you know. But but YouTube uh, is like pushing live streams, and so many beginners uh, joined and never even heard of Scala, and maybe they're not even programmers, and so. I figured let's do something for beginners so that they can ask questions and uh, yeah, learn about Scala, learn about programming and stuff. So we can just like hang out. This is more like of a, uh, more of a like hangout stream. Like even if we, if I stay like within this scene for the entire stream, like it's a success, right? So the goal is to answer questions, to hang out with you guys. And just like on the side, I'm gonna like um, hack this tiny project because I kind of need it, right? So if you if you missed the previous stream where I talked to myself for like 80 minutes because I, I, I didn't manage to click uh, the go live button, um, uh, I've been a digital nomad for a while and uh, I, I was used to have like a spreadsheet with all of my expenses. Um, but now, uh, you know, I'm settling down, I'm settling down in Brazil and I pay things in three different currencies. I pay, um, uh, I pay bills in Brazilian real, in dollars and in euros. And so uh, I created like a spreadsheet uh, you know, which would do this thing for me, but I didn't like how it turned out. And so I was like, hey, why not just like hack in in Scala? Uh, this way beginners can learn and stuff. And so this is what we did. Oh, I forgot to LinkedIn. Hold on, let me actually go to LinkedIn. Also, uh, kind of an announcement. I'm on vacation for the next two weeks. Uh, on the second week, I'm gonna go somewhere. But in the first week, uh, I wanna create a couple of videos. Uh, and very likely, I will be um, streaming as I'm making them. So um, I might stream like very sporadically, randomly, might even might even be every day. So you guys might wanna hang out. And because I'm on vacation, I can do this like early in my day so that, uh, you know, people in Europe can, um, uh, can, hang out, can, can hang out. Because the previous stream was always like in my evenings. So only like people in the US would hang out and people for people in Europe, it would be like super late. So yeah. I'm such a noob in LinkedIn. How do I find my posts? 
uh, probably my profile and stuff, right? Uh, post impressions. Great, where's my... Where's that thing? And this one. All right, cool. Yeah, so uh, as always, don't forget to hit the like button so that more people stumble on the stream. Uh, apart from this, uh, pretty much gonna uh, gonna start working on it. So I'm gonna open the VS Code stuff. Um, but yeah, like feel free to interrupt me anytime. I recently enabled the sound for this for this thing. Let me let me know if this was too loud or not. Oh, look at this! I docked myself. It happens. Um, anyway, it's just a VM. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Um, So yeah, like always in the beginnings, I um, um, I run what do I run? Uh, I run updates, and um, yeah, hey man, what's up? And then once they finish, we're gonna open VS Code and start hacking a little bit. Man, first day of vacation, I slept for like ten hours. Feels so good. Also, I have an air conditioner now, so. Like this whole streaming scenario and like making videos is much more pleasant. Like I, every time I like I used to like sweat like crazy because of like you know the lights and everything. Oh man. So how are you guys doing? Where are you at? What's happening in your life? I finally installed Powerline, uh, Power Level 10K yesterday to play around with it. Um, happy with it so far. Just need to like set up the colors because um, for now it's uh, for now it doesn't match my theme, but it still looks good. Um, we're gonna see it in just a second when it when this thing finishes. There we go. Right. So like these colors, they don't they don't match my theme, but fine. You know, I made it look. Um, very similar to, to how it used to look. Um, all right, so we need to go into dev, at, no, not this one. Um, mining calc, like this is how I called it, right? So it's a Git repo, right? But we haven't really, you know, it's we, we just like shoved everything in at the at the end of the of the last commit. So let's open it with VS Code. It's a funny thing in the power level um theme like there's a thing called i believe it's called transient or something like this uh prompt so basically like every time i press enter it removes the print line of the pre previous prompt right so not the output of the previous commands but like the prompt itself okay so if i do like ls right see like the prompt disappeared but the output stayed so if i press enter like the previous prompt disappeared so this makes like things um easier to like copy paste because the prompts are not like in between it flickers though a little bit, right? All right, so are we good here? Yeah, it looks like. So what we did the last time is, yeah, exactly this, right? So B is my alias for blue, okay? Um, so we have a file in resources. Let's actually go and open. Yeah, it's over here, right? It's just like this with some random numbers. So it's just a CSV. We have like four columns, description, and then Brazilian real, euro, and USD. Uh, like alphabetically um, sorted currency that I care about. Nothing is parameterized. Um, like this is one of the big things that I kind of wanted, wanted to teach with the previous stream is that there's a huge difference between like hacking on some tiny scripts and, you know, um, user facing applications because I have control over, uh, over everything, right? I have control over the entire input. I am the user. I, you know, we, 
usually like in Scala, you would have like very strong types, you would have tests, everything is functional. Here's like the opposite, okay? Just got new Scala project at work. No cats, no TF, sadly. Oh, so what is it then? Um, yeah, so we were reading the file and at the end we're producing, uh, we have a bunch of tabs over here that we should remove. Uh, tap, 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 tap. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. Let's also uh, clear the screen, okay? So basically this is what it does, right? So this is the whole output. Um, it takes you, all right? So for example, over here, the values in dollars, it converts every value to all the currencies, not just the sum, okay? The goal is so that I can like show it to my girlfriend and say, hey, I'm paying like 10 bucks for Spotify. Again, the numbers are arbitrary, uh, but 10 bucks like doesn't mean much to her. So she wants to see this in Brazilian real. And so uh, I would see, okay, so $10, you know, Brazilian real is like 50, you know, the, the conversion rates are currently like just hard coded. Um, you know, this is what we're going to fix today. And this is how much it is in Euro. And also like, this is, uh, this is the sum as well. Okay. So, uh, what is we're going to start by writing, um, what we want to accomplish today. Processing, uh, data with Spark and, uh, Borer. Good enough for a beginner like me. Yeah. So this is like a totally different thing, right? So like, um, Scala is a general, uh, purpose programming language, so you can do like many things with it, but it found its niche in whenever, wherever Java found its niche, which is the backend of, uh, web applications or data processing. Okay. So this is like two different things. Like I in particular am like a standard backend developer, uh, who is very interested in DevOps by the way. Um, but I have no idea about data processing. I never attached Spark, nor do I have any desire to touch Spark. So it's a very different thing. Um, by the way, if you guys want to like Spark tutorials and stuff, uh, check out Rock the JVM. Like he, he has a bunch of them. Okay. Um, I didn't check them out, but people seem to like it. Okay. So uh, we're going to go to the top. So we already have a couple of notes over here for uh, V2. Um, so we want to fetch the currencies. Uh, we want to calculate the sum as we move along. Don't really need that. So we're going to move this to V3, if at all. Like, uh, like originally, I didn't plan for this to be like a series. I thought we could just do like this in one thing. But as we all know, estimations are hard. So that, that didn't happen, right? Um, give this. Move out that thing. All right. Um, Sort by amount, like I thought about this, but actually, you know, because I'm going to create the input, you know, the CSV uh, myself, I'm probably just going to sort it uh, before I, I put it in. So it's going to be automatically sorted anyway, uh, I think. Um, so we're just going to say, um, uh, or at least ensure that it's uh, already, already sorted. Uh, all right. So, um, I wanted one other thing to do. I wanted to do one other thing today, uh, but I kind of forgot. Like, I want to do, well, clean up some stuff a little. And I'm going to write everything down, like, even, like, every little thing, just because I don't want to forget it. Uh, like, I want to make the... Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. So, um, I want to make the output pretty, but also... Uh, I want to output to a file and also uh, read input uh, from um, from like main main args instead of uh, resources, right? Because the idea would be for me that you know I would change the input and I would like you know I would call this thing, I would give it the input, and it would um, output a file. Um, Maybe in like V3, if there ever is a V3, maybe we can still do it today, actually. Um, let's get, let's not get too ambitious, but maybe. Um, uh, control the, no, like this is not really, the output will always be into the local directory, output to a file in a local directory. Okay, so this is pretty much everything I want to do today. Um,
gonna do it. I wanna wanna do it. I wanna do it like this. Okay. So um this fetch cash currencies is the most important one. So we're we're going to start with this one, but before we do this one, you know, we're just gonna clean up some stuff and um and output like pretty fine the output. Right, so uh, what's going to happen is that the output will also be on the console and in the file. Okay, um, so we're going to actually start with all I want to do for pretty finding is it's already pretty. Um, I just want to put crosses over here. So if we start SPT, um, I have like this fancy table there. Why does it take forever to start? Yeah, this one. Oh. Actually, exactly this character that I wanted, we don't have. <laughs> so for now, um, I want to go to here, right? So over here, I want to say hyphens with how are they called? I'm gonna call it crosses equals hyphens, and I believe there's a method called updated where I can just say, yeah, exactly. Updated at the position, let's let's just guess. So let's do like 10, and we're gonna put the character X just for now, and we're gonna do it uh, again, and we're gonna do, I think like around, I'm just guessing, right, around 90. I'm gonna put another X, okay? And so uh, over here, we're gonna say with, come on, with crosses and over here I'm gonna do the same thing all close okay uh, so let's do let's do that okay that was a horrible guess oh and also we need much more right we need one we need three crosses right so the first one is like 15 or something right let's see close 15 Okay, 16, perfect. First one is at 16. Uh, the other one is probably going to be like, at, I don't know. No, like 34. Okay, 34. As I told you, like, half very different from like actually doing something properly. Um, so let's do like 60 over there. Okay, so let's do like 50. All right. Okay, 50. Damn it. There we go. Cool. So because we're in Scala, um, you know, we can play around with cool things. So I'm gonna create a super tiny extension method uh, for a string uh, that we're gonna call um, ins, well, uh, with cross, with cross, crosses, with cross, let's do cross. Um, so yeah, the same, like we're gonna give it like the index, just the index, okay? and it's going to give another string okay and so it's going to do like self updated and then index um and now like we're gonna like do like the x okay and so now over here so it's like okay let's call it was cross at okay so now we're going to do was cross at 16 with cross at 34 uh, with cross at 52 okay so right and you know just because we're playing around and you know uh i kind of want to trigger you to ask questions uh this is also a, a fold right so Is it a fold? What are we folding over? Like I'm giving it a thing. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a fold. Okay. So, um, so assuming that we have a list of, you know, these numbers like 16, 34, 52, uh, we can like fold left and we start with the hyphens. Okay. And over here, uh, we have the, uh, accumulation, which is the hyphens and we have the, uh, current index. Well, we can just, yeah, current index. Okay. And so what we're giving back is h dot was cross at index. Think correctly, uh, current index, current index. Okay. So if I did everything correctly, it's exactly the same thing. Okay. Yeah, of course it can be tail recursive. Um, like if you have seen my video, like my previous video about, about functional programming, like I said, like, e, like recursion is usually taught when you're, when you're learning functional programming, but when you, when you have learned all of it, then in, in, in reality, you never actually use it because it's all hidden behind abstractions like a fold. Okay. And because like, like look at this code, like in Scala, um, in Scala, if the parameters occur only once and in the same order as over here, right? So first there is the H, then there is a current index and we're using them only once in exactly the same order. Then instead of this, we can also just go like this, right? We can just say underscore dot with cross at, um, probably not like this. Hold on. We probably need to do like that. Okay. So this is the same thing, right? Um, me, yeah, so probably like the prettiest, prettiest way to do this would be like this. Yeah. Okay. So this is fine. We can, we can do, we can fix this and fix def. Like Scala became a little bit more restrictive about the naming. Come on. Now I fixed it. Like this is metals, not clear. I need the diagnostic. There we go. Okay. So. Like this is where we are inserting crosses now. Same thing. So now uh, we just need to grab a um, uh, a cross. Uh, Unicode box drawing characters. Yeah. So we need. Come on. they're so tiny hold on so there are a bunch of I, I believe it's this one that we need oh come on it's an image seriously box drawing characters wikipedia yeah there we go this is what this is what i need okay so it could be this one Let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, see, beautiful table. And now also we have somewhere an empty print line. Yeah, no worries, man. Like this is this is why we're here, uh, so that I can uh, answer questions like this. Okay, hold on. Print. Okay, so. Like this one, we don't need anymore. Oh yeah, there we go. This is it. It's this print line and this one. Okay. So there we go. Like this is our result. It kind of looks ugly without the, without the hyphens at the top. So let's add them as well. Um, so I'm thinking, let's do like this, right? So let's go like this. So this is gonna be like the body and then like afterwards, okay? Oh, actually, why not put them on, on each individual line um, like this? Okay, so let's do like uh, form it off and form it on. In fact, like this is something that can be uh, configured in Scala FMT. Um, 
So let's see, uh, configure Scala FMT to not indent these ones and this, because by default it already does this, I believe for, you know, for the Boolean ones, for like this one and this one, uh, but not, not for these ones. So there's like an array where we need to insert it and then it would be, it would be like this. This is how I want to do it, right? Because this is what we have, like we have the head, right? Which is like this line. The um, happens with which is that one and then we have the body and then we have hyphens with crosses and we have um total okay so all i want to do is i want to go and start like this and like th let's see uh well obviously not like that okay so as you can see it looks better but not perfect so we need the hyphens not with crosses we need the hyphens with uh okay so we need the hyphen with i'm gonna call it with with t okay so this is gonna be like hyphens with um Because one is the T, the other one is like the the one at the bottom. Um, let's call it hyphens with T, it's fine, okay? And also like now because we have like uh, positions, uh, we can uh, have it like this, okay? So now it's like positions, or technically like this is indexes, right? Whoops. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, positions, okay? So let's call them uh, indices or... Let's go like this. So indexes, fall left. Okay. So this is going to be with... Uh, with T... With T's at, like this. Okay, so so this is where we need the. Um, actually, should should not do this in this browser. Hold on, I should do this in over here, like this one. This way, we don't have like like these many tabs and stuff. Okay, so we need the one that that looks like a T at the top. I believe it's this one. I'm not sure because they always have like a version which is like more vertical and the one that is more horizontal, like this one. See. So let's try with this one first. Okay. Where, where did I insert it? Nowhere, right? So it's going to be like hyphens with... Uh, I'm going to call it T's. Okay, so this one was at the top. So this was the correct one. And now we're gonna have like with T's uh like, let's call it with inverted T's. Invert I have no idea how they're called. Okay. So this one is I believe it's is it this one? I'm really not sure. Let's take this one. I believe it should be noticeable if we... T it looks like it's wrong. Like, th like this thing is shorter than that one. Uh, but let's use it anyway so that we can see. Uh, okay, so like this and like that. Hyphens with inverted... Inverted T. So now we just need to use them, which is over here. Inverted. Inverted. I don't know, it actually looks alright. Okay. So uh, we have a proper table. A little bit shorter. Um, uh, let's. Do 
Same with the Shopify. Okay. Now the thing is that like with the real numbers, it's probably going to change, right? Um, oh no, no, actually it's not going to change because we did like so much betting uh, that it's going to be fine. Um, at the at, like towards the end of the video, we might like do it even even more pretty. You know, we're going to have like a thing like over here and like a thing over here. Maybe we can do like the rounded uh, rounded corners. But it's, it's, it's really not a big deal. You just copy paste the rounded corners one, right? So like, uh, like this one will be like at the top left. This one will be the top right, uh, bottom left, and uh, yeah, bottom right. Okay. Not a big deal. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to like, I think because now we have like, we have like way too much duplication. Um... No, actually, I want to remove these. So I want to have like a helper function that does like this whole indexes fold left, blah, blah, blah. And then we can also hide the indexes. So we're going to have like, uh, uh, I'm going to call it do stuff for now. So it's not going to need the indexes. It's not going to need the hyphens. It's only going to need uh, the, the function uh, that will take it will take the string and the and the index, and I'm really not sure if we will be able to like pass it in with that expansion, but we'll see. String and and um, produce a string, and then this whole thing will produce a string like this. Okay, so it will do that thing right and over here let's see if we can like i don't think that we can just because of the shape uh yeah so we need to move this one up real quick oh we can well okay here we can right but like when we call do stuff um i don't think that we'll be able to do this right so do stuff i don't think that we can just do like with cross add because of the shape yeah Let's see, it's like I found like a function that like takes an integer, produces a string. Is there a way to like uncarry it? Function dot uncurry. Let's try this one. Maybe it will. It does. Great. Perfect. Because then, then I don't need to do this whole underscore and I don't need to adapt it manually. Okay. Uh, right. So this is what we have. Uh, so we copy this, copy this. And so over here, we're going to say with cross. No, with, uh, with T's. Yeah, I'll, I'll try this in a second. Um, it should work in Scala 3. Uh, it just said like metals didn't like uh, auto complete it, so I trusted it. I should not have. In fact, like it should work in Scala 3 than it used to. Uh, let me take this one real quick, put here uh, like this, because now we don't need to have indexes outside. In fact, now there's no point in having this val at all, val at all right? Like this. Okay, so let's see. We didn't break anything. Okay, so let's try like what you guys are seeing. Um, so like this, like this, on curry. It used to work like in Scala too, right? Um, like you would need to do this weird like parents and stuff. Uh, can I ask how Encurred works? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it basically does like that thing manually uh, that, that, that we would, uh, it does a thing automatically that we would need to do manually, okay? So instead of like, if we wanted to do this ourselves, 
do stuff, it wants a function that takes a string and an int, right? So this would be like uh, like our hyphens and our index, okay? And now now like arrow to the right, and now we do like h dot you know whiz cross at and then give it the. End. So like this uncurried thing, um, because like like what's happening like is that like this extension syntax is like a little bit um, uh, confusing, right? But basically like behind the scenes like with cross at two, right? So it looks like this, right? Cell string, and then it returns a function that would like take the index and produce, produce a string, right? Like this, okay? So the implementation is like still the same, okay? And um, so this is the index now, right? The index. Okay, uh, and, and in Scala there is a um, there is a syntax for these functions that return other functions, uh, and, and it looks like this. Like you can put like the index here, right? Like this, and now we don't need to do it in, to do it over here. So now it's just a function that returns a string, and so and so it's like this. Okay, so this is a curry, and this is the uncurried version. Right, and so this uncurried thing like did that thing for us that I just did manually, right? So it did like this thing basically. Okay. I think the problem is that extensions are like functions with two parameter lists. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, exactly, exactly. Um, all right. So uh, we fix all of these like nasty things. We just need to rename do stuff. How we're we gonna call this? Um, So I'm going to call it horizontal line. Horizontal line. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. And I believe like we use hyphens only like at this point over there. So we can also like indent it. Like this. Yeah. Stop whining. Okay, so this is an indentation. Alright, right, cool. So we're good. Okay, like usually I would like to, uh, you know, I, I use ZSH and I made videos about ZSH and all my ZSH, and it comes with plugins. One of my favorite plugins is GWIP. So it it's it stands for Git Work in Progress. So it basically just like throws everything into the current current commit, so that you know it's it's sort of like okay we're kind of like done today, right? For this uh, first step, okay, and like instead of like precisely describing like what exactly I did, uh, I would like because like this is a stream, right? This is not a work thing. Uh, we'll just have a commit for everything that we did today, and we're gonna call it like day two, and that's it, okay? And then you guys can um, you know can can have a look. all right. Let's have a look at the, uh, like before we even like, well, actually I want to do, oh my God, like this is so ugly. Yeah, let's clean, let's clean this up really. Let's kind of look at it anymore. And also I kind of want to see, because like we had an issue with this thing. Like for some reason, like this is like the, the, the currency rates, right? And for some reason, if and with us um well first of all let's let's have it like so this didn't break anything like i see like 10 9 50 i think it's all the same right uh let's actually let's actually run it once hold on so let's run it once and let's and run it again and it's the same thing right it's all the same thing and so if we remove like this and this that is exactly the same way but Scala barks at us so we're gonna go with like Scala annotation no warn no shit we do no oh <laughs> okay oh jeez okay so the same thing, 
So Scala should not warn about this. It's just that it is a little bit limited in exhaustivity checking. Uh, there might be a compiler flag that gives it like a little bit more headroom, uh, like to to breathe, because there I believe there is like a like a bandwidth of memory that it is allowed to allocate uh, to test uh, exhaustivity checking over here. But in all honesty, like this is pathetic. This is a tiny unit with three things in there. So, but you know we're gonna forgive it because it's Scala three is kind of new and whatever. Okay, so blah blah. I kind I just kind of forgot to remove it uh, last time. Uh, let's also do it like this. So, and like, this is what I meant, like, so like what I, what I just did is not substantial to like justify another, another commit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an alias called gcan, which I have overridden a little bit. It basically says, okay, uh, add everything to the, to the git index, commit amend, no edit, no verify, just like shove it into the previous commit. Okay. So we have this, if I do gcan, we still have this, nothing changed. Okay. And by the way. The thing that I mentioned in the beginning that like we don't have these prompts in between, it looks so nice, so nice. So now it's like shoved into the previous command. Um, okay, so so yeah, let's clean this up real quick and then let's let's finally do the currencies, uh, currencies. Uh, also, I believe like over here we were messing around last time. I believe we actually had an issue over here, right? I remember. Um, let me just try this. So if I remove tool list over here. And I put a ray. I believe it was actually like telling us that everything is like wrong now. Now everything is fine though. Like I almost, it's fine. Okay, so we don't need to do tool list. Um, are we using L anywhere? We don't. Like we used to print it out. Okay. And like, look, this is so nice in Scala, um, in Scala 3 was the extension methods, right? Like it is so, um, like the boilerplate is, is almost like not there. So it's super easy to do something like this, right? Instead. Okay. And I'll just like remove that and just do this. Okay. With a space, right? Now this, and, and this is another beauty, right? Like this still works, right? But now I can also do, I can also do parsed. Like I really love how they did it in Scala 3. This is so beautiful. Um, on the other hand, like I kind of wish that, like, like I should be allowed to say over here, which way am I allowing my users to use it? Like I, I would like to have the ability to constrain it only if I want to, right? If I don't constrain it, it should be possible to be used like both ways. But if I do want to constrain it for some reason, I, I would I would love to have the ability to do this, right? Like, um, like in fact, like, like, like for what I just did, like it would be cool if it required this, right? And then like you know the compiler would be able to do. Um, to, to do this thing, okay? So, so my point is that like, I'm going to use like these things in production, like once we move to Scala 3 like properly, I'm gonna use these things in production like all the time, these tiny extension methods, and they will be inside of my class. It will be like super private, right? So this can be a private dev, right? It's still gonna work because it's gonna be like only, only inside of the class, okay? And it's just gonna make my code more beautiful without making it too complicated. Because all of this is like, um, what's it called, um, visible, right? So it, it sees like, look, it says, okay, um, it's an extension method, right? And I can jump in there, right? So everything works. So it's not like some weird implicit magic, right? I can jump in there and I can see what happened. Um, all right. So, oh yeah, I remember one thing that I also wanted to do here is I wanted to ensure that I wanted to ensure that only one of them is set, right? So like the, it can happen that like for Spotify, for example, over here, like I also have like a five over here, right? So I have the, like I'm paying $10 and five euros. Like in reality, this would never happen, but I could make this mistake. And so um, I didn't know that I could, but cool. Okay. And so now it... 
I thought it would actually ruin the output. But it didn't. Hold on. It didn't run. Okay, it didn't run. Okay, there we go. So see, so now it like ruined everything somehow. Well, I mean, it added them together, right? But I don't... Is it actually good? Is it, is it good? It's sort of like a feature, right? So it took like $10 and five euros. It's, it converted like the euros to dollars. So it actually like the, the output is actually correct. But I don't want to have this, right? So this happens in, in like in, 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 in real applications like very often actually. So as a feature is super, super easy to implement. So you're like, ah, oh, cool, I'm just gonna add it. You know, it's a feature, you know? Um, but you might not want it, right? So just because it's easy to add doesn't mean that you want it. Opposite, like I want, uh, I want over here to say insuring, which is not how you would do this in production because insuring uh, will, um, insuring will uh, throw an exception. Okay, but this is just a hacky script, so it's totally fine. Um, so I want to ensure that only one of them is not null. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in a list. Well, actually, I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna we're gonna do this immediately with an extension method. Okay. So I'm just going to say ensuring. Um, so ensuring takes a function that like takes whatever came out of this list. Um, which is not what I want to. I'm not going to call ensuring because I don't I want to test the input. So over here, I'm just going to say I believe I can say require. Yeah, require. And um, yeah, so because because we're doing this only here, I actually don't need to create an extension method. And so one of the overloads for require is, uh, okay. So, um, I'm gonna say, Input dot uh, description, and I wish I had auto completion, and I would have had auto completion if I did like this stuff. Okay, input description. Um, input had multiple multiple values. And um, and we're gonna do something like input equals. Right, it's a case class, right? It's a list of parsed row. Hold on, hold on. I'm doing something wrong. Okay, I need to do this for the input row, okay? So we're here. Uh, so input row. Row. Same thing over here. So, um, what are we... Um, so what are we requiring? We're requiring that a list of... Well, let's actually do how to call like buddy and something, right? So requirement and message. Okay. So let's do like requirement and this one is going to be message and this way it's going to be formatted a little bit prettier. So list of input, uh, input row dot BRL, input row dot EUR, input row dot USD. And we're going to count the ones that are not equal zero and it should be one okay like it should it should throw right so it says exceptions thread main requirement failed spotify input had multiple values input row is spotify zero five and ten beautiful um let's also have space over here Okay, 
Okay, so now I can... Uh, obviously, SBT doesn't notice. Is there a way to like tell SBT or Bloop to also monitor other files? Probably there is. All right, so this is good that what we just did. Um, so let's like, you know, shove it in. Okay, so ba -ba 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 -ba. this is fine. We had a conversation about monoids over here last time. Okay, so this is this is the ugliness that we need to that we need to refactor. So we already have like a notion of a helper over here. Um, so let's see. We're doing like description. Pipe helper, BRL, pipe helper, BRL, pipe helper. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do H for now. Just so that these lines are like shorter. Um, no, I still wanna fit it like, why did it? Hold on. So before it didn't do this, now it does. Great. Um, I want to remove this pipe thing, so I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do this. So it's shorter. Um, okay, so here's the same thing, right? So age into raw description and format, format, pipe into helper. Hold on. Uh, okay. So I want this to be H like that. Same thing here, H like that. Same thing here. Okay. Okay, so it's better, right? It even almost fits into, into this thing. Okay, so this format here is, are we using it somewhere? We don't. Okay, so first thing is let's move it in. Or actually, are we doing like map renders? Okay. So this is a format, it doesn't need to be a lazy val anymore. And we can call it F. Like usually it's not a uh, it's not a good practice to call everything like was one letter. But first of all, we're just hacking, and second of all, uh, if the scope is tiny, right? Like if I don't know what H is, I jump in and it's like two lines above, right? It doesn't make much sense to names. I, I'd much rather have it um, fit into one line. Okay. So I think it's good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay. Also, it doesn't need to be green, right? There you go. Okay. Um, actually, it's better when it's green because then it uh, it is visually from, from everything. So let's go with green. All right, cool. I believe we did the, we did the cleanup, we did, um, like sort by mount is not necessary, clean up some stuff. So like this one, well, let's go like this, done. Actually, we could also like grab a Unicode character for done. 
right so unicode characters mm -hmm. oh there's a check mark this is exactly what i wanted check box let's see if let's see if there are others It also depends on how my font font is going to render it. Let's start with this one. Horrible. Um, let's go with that one. Yeah, that's much better. So this one is done. Uh, prefy the output. It's also done. Um, so these ones we're going to do in the end because like as long as we're hacking, we kind of want to read from the resources. Uh, yeah. OK, we can we can check super quick this Scala FMT thing uh, because I believe it's fast. Are you guys still here? Say something. Um, yeah, you are. Cool. Don't forget to hit the like button so that more people stumble on the stream. So what did I want? I wanted to not be here. Uh, I wanted to be here and I wanted to uh, go to Scala FMT config. All right, now how is it called? Uh, probably it's indent. Super tiny everything. Indent operator, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Exam scope or regex. I really have no idea how the Scala FMT guys maintain it. It's so many variations. Like the, like how how can you test this thing? Like there are so many variations of this thing. Like I, it's it's magical to me how this thing even still works. Um, okay, so this is pretty much what we need. Um. So we don't have it. Nice. So it's indent operator. I have this thing. I am not. I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to need this real quick. Um. Wait, hold on. Like this. Okay, so I need to do that. And then pipe. And that. Actually, I should switch them probably. Because I believe that, like, you know, this setting might actually ruin everything. And also, I think I need to do... No, it's correct, right? So it's like, it looks like they're separated with pipes. We have this one, we have this one. I think I need another pipe over here. Okay. Let's see, it's called FMT. Uh, yes, correct. It's from my template. Um, all right, so let's remove this. I'm pretty sure. It's, okay, 
Really? It helped? No, there's no way. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I for sure need to escape the plus. Okay, so I want to have this thing. Escape the plus. Escape this plus. I think it should be fine now, no? Yeah, it is fine. Okay. And it works, right? Yeah, perfect. I was surprised that it actually worked. <laughs> Almost first try. Um, all right. So basically the way this works is that everything is separated by pipes. So this is the AND operator. These two ones are the OR operator. Then we have another pipe. Then we have to escape a plus because we're doing regexes. And then we have this pipe and then we have that thing. So like ideally we would also like put all the others, um, but you know, we're only using these ones. So for now it's fine. Okay. And like this method is super long. Uh, like usually I don't like these and um, and uh, things, but this is a script. So we're gonna go like and render it. Okay. Just so that we know, oh, okay, we're end ending the rendered thing. Also, um, like VS Code technically has uh, like indentation guides. Uh, I like to work properly. I, I got them to work properly with like curly braces, but um, um, but never with with these ones. Oh, my indentation is currently set to false. Let's see. Okay, so so now it works, right? The indentation. Therefore, like for this like render thing. Um, right. So now we kind of like don't need this and because we kind of know that okay there one of the scope like ends there. Um, so anyway, like the way the reason I disable it is because I actually want to have something like active, right? But the only thing I can do is like true or false, and uh, it's just right. So I'm gonna set it back to false. Like, see, like, the way with the curly braces, uh, it, the way it works with the curly braces or, like, these ones is that I only see once I'm there, right? So if I'm there, then I have this line over there, right? If I'm, like, one above, I have this line over there. But I don't want, like, to have, like, too many of them. I wish that they introduce um, the active setting over here as well, you know, for this one, right? I want to be able to go over here and say, you know, active. The same or something like this. Um, anyhow... Cool. So I'm very happy with the progress that we did, but uh, but ultimately ultimately we haven't created like any features yet. So we need to start talking about um, fetching the currencies. Now, I always like to I was I always recommend people to not go look at the APIs that can give it to you, because if you do this, it will affect how you create your interfaces. Right? It's sort of like like back in the day people used to. Um, um, like, like they have a thing to do. The first thing they would think about is like, okay, how is my my uh, data going, going to look like in the database, right? In, in postures, for example. Um, and, and this is not the good approach because it will affect. You know, you, you're going to have, you, you should have an impedance mismatch between how your data looks like and how your code looks like. But if you go like data first, you're not going to have this impedance mismatch, and so you're going to be constrained too much. You're not going to be able to have like. Uh, really powerful things that a very powerful language like Scala gives you if you start like this you Jeez very loud motorcycle. You always should start like view first. So like test first like like whatever like the beginning of the chain is This is where you should start is the most optimal way to develop software. However It's also the most painful one. It's sort of like one of those like discipline things, you know um, Hold up Now, in our case, we actually don't have this problem because we uh, we, already, we already did it view first. So at the end of the day, whichever API we're going to use, this is what we need from it, right? Like give us this thing. Like we're giving, we're giving you like from to, and you give me the rate, right? And the rate is just a, like, bo uh, like currency is an enum, uh, rate is just a big decimal, okay? We don't care about like 
validation or like uh you know you know the fact that the rate should always be positive whatever like we don't care about any of that okay and uh if the rate is not there because it's just a script we're just gonna die right so this is not a production level application i'm gonna i'm gonna beat this horse to death okay so uh when i'm gonna do like oh it's gonna be like an option operate or something like this we're not gonna do any of that okay so the question is okay so we're gonna use some api it's probably gonna give us like a list of rates or something uh how can we generate this function right and the way we generate this function is going to be uh, by using a map okay so it's going to be a map from you know this like the key is going to be this tuple you know from two and the value is going to be the rate okay so maybe like this is going to be like the first one um where we're going to create another file uh we're gonna call it um currency currency fetch whatever um like this okay so it's very hard for me to think without traits so i'm just gonna do like currency fetcher like this and like uh so what we need is like this right okay and now like uh okay because we have top level definitions like it actually found the rate okay and the implementation is also going to be here uh object currency uh fetcher uh like in most languages you would just do this right you would say like currency fetcher implementation you know extends uh currency fetcher and i believe metals these days is capable of um of generating these things for me yes perfect nice okay um so you would do like this uh in scala we kind of like especially with the tagless final approach, we, we noticed that we, we only use like one instance of this class. Uh, even if we fake it in the traits, then we're gonna have like one instance over there. And so we started doing this. Um, there are a couple of reasons um, for, for doing it like this. Um, and the main reason is that now make is a very simple function. Right, and so we're not constrained by what a constructor can do, you know. So we're using an anonymous class like this. This type can be inferred for us, right? So um, because like back in the day, uh, like the constructors might have had like bugs and whatever. So now that you have like a, and you know, you don't need to make like some constructor private. You can do validation here, right? So it becomes like a proper factory method. And we realize that if we have a proper factory method, then why bother with some like private class? Uh, the only downside of this is that um, sometimes metals cannot find it. So for example, over here, if I go to implementation uh, of the rate, right? And for some reason I cannot press like control F12, but if I go to the implementation, it will actually find it. But if I'm over here, sometimes it doesn't find the anonymous class. See? Go to implementation, even though it's like right here. And I believe like, even if I do this, right? But this is just a tooling limitation, okay? Maybe IntelliJ can actually do this, okay? See, it, it just cannot see that it's there. Uh, so this is annoying. Another annoying thing is that like in the stack traces, you're gonna have like, um, you're gonna like, if if it fails, right? You're gonna see some like currency fetcher dot, like dollar anonymous and then dot rate or something like this, right? But whatever, okay. Um, Okay, um, so the idea is instead of using uh, constructors, create a factory for the clients to use. Uh, no, not just that. Uh, so like a factory method pattern is good anyway, right? But usually a factory method, you know, does some validation, but then it like creates an instance of an existing class. Over here, we don't even have that class. We're using an anonymous class, right? Because like, no matter how big these applications are, like you're going to call this make only only once anyway so it really doesn't matter you don't need a class like like classes like originally right this they were supposed to be like templates right like if you need like multiple like bank accounts you create multiple bank accounts if they if they have like some state inside or something right in functional programming you, you never need like more than one instance of the class i mean i shouldn't say never obviously there are some cases for this but 
Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Also, we had um, we had this this uh, summoner pattern. Um, so if you have something like um, a trade functor, right? And Scala uh, in Scala three, it would look like this, right? So it's an extension for um, for um, an f of a, right? Like this, and it's going to be a DAF uh, map b, okay? And you're going to have the function that goes from a to b, and like this whole thing is going to produce. So this is a functor, right? And then like it's a, it's a type class for a functor. Um, uh, can you do the companion object to implement the trait? Uh, what do you mean? It's already a companion. Right? This is a companion. Uh, this object currency. F uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, you can as well, right? But the problem is that uh, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to inject parameters, right? So for example, over here, right? So if I wanted to have uh, an instance uh, for a, like a functor for a um, for an option, right? Uh, given functor for an option uh, with, and now I'm gonna have like this thing. Okay, you understand. Okay, cool. But maybe maybe somebody else like didn't understand this point, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go like this. Okay, so um, like this, right? And so like our F everywhere. is going to be an option. So uh, I'm, I'm even gonna do this manually, right? So if we're gonna do like f of a match, you know, if it's a sum of a, well, then create a sum of f of a, right? And otherwise like, do so this is a functor for an option, okay? So that's actually not a good example because I wanted to show so let's say that we're not using the given um, uh, the given syntax. So let's say that um, let's say that we have like an object object functor, right? Like if I go like with like make over here, right? Um, it's a really bad example. Why is it a bad example? like a functor let's take uh, like my algebra right and it's gonna have right so it's gonna have like full it's, it's like for some reason it's harder for me to think in terms of a functor okay and so we're gonna have like uh, foo you know and it returns a string and so my algebra over here and over here like you have like this f right And so now you can create your algebra by doing like new, okay? And over here, you're gonna have like override, like lazy val foo, which is a string, equals. Um, over here. So like you already understood it, but like maybe somebody else didn't, right? So if I don't do this, right? If I just do, if I go like extends, this is, by the way, this is called a selfless trait pattern. Uh, you, you can look it up if you want, okay? Be able to do this, right? But like, where is this F? Like, where is this F coming from? Like, I, I cannot do this, right? Like, objects cannot have parameters, okay? So I know but you understood it from the beginning, but maybe somebody else did, okay? So this is why, this is exactly why we do this, because this thing works for every. And by the way, in Scala 3, in Scala 3, um, oh, I didn't finish. I didn't finish explaining the thing about the about the functors. Uh, I will in, in a second. Okay, um, finish explaining the functors. Functors thing. So in Scala three, you can actually also because you can have top level definitions. Uh, you can also go like this, right, and just remove this object entirely, right, like this. But even this is not is not always going to work fine because um, if you don't have parameters here, it's gonna look ugly, right? 
whereas make is gonna look fun. Um, okay, so the defunctor thing that I wanted to explain. So um, if you have like a trait a functor of f uh, not equals like this, and you have like that thing in there. Okay, so this is an f and this is an f, right? Um, okay, so we what we used to do is we used to um, we used to have a companion object. Uh, like this is what cats does, right? And over here, um, this is just a just a habit. Okay, like over here, we would we would have a thing called a summoner, and we would call it apply, right? And so if you give me some f that already has a functor, you know, then I'm gonna give you the functor for the f. And how am I gonna do this? Well, I'm just gonna summon it for you, right? So this is why it's called a summoner. Right, and so therefore, when you want to, when you wanted to like do some code with this, right, you could say, okay, well, instead of like giving saying, okay, well, give me a functor for an option, right. So instead of like saying, uh, summon the functor for an option, and you know, and then do map, and uh, you know, I'm gonna give you like a I don't know a sum of ten, okay, and we're gonna do map with I don't know like plus one. Right. So instead of this, uh, okay, I cannot do this as a top level definition. Okay, so I'm gonna do like object, object blah. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so instead of like this, uh, I can remove the summon, like this. Okay, so because like because the apply over here is gonna call a summon for me. Okay, so this is called the summoner pattern, and so because of this, uh, we would also not call this method apply because sometimes it would collide. Right, because like we could call this like apply, right? And we we decided not not to do this. Like there are like many reasons, um, and then we kind of like on just doing um, on just doing like this thing because it works for all cases. There are n no exceptions. Like this always works both in Scala two and both in Scala three. Okay. All right, so. The implementation for this is going to take some sort of uh, like a like a client, right? So this is going to be client, which is going to be um, uh, currency fetcher client, okay? And we're probably not even going to do anything functional, okay? And so like this client uh, is going to have like this function that is going to not to have like these strong types, okay? So it's gonna be like from string, um, to string, um, a rate or something like this, okay? Because like the, what, whatever client we're going to use, it's not going to know anything about our enum enumeration, okay? And in fact, it's not even going to be. It's not even going to look like this. It is actually going to be um, something like get rates, and it's going to return a um, <laughs> like I have a habit to constrain. Like this is this is just a script that we're hacking, so it doesn't really matter. But I just have a habit to constrain things. Uh, like from the get-go so instead of uh, having a map where um, where the keys are going to be a tuple of you know from to right so string string um, and the value is going to be the rate right which is just a type alias for a big decimal okay so instead of having this um, fetcher client right so instead of having this, and by the way, like both Scala two and Scala three have this thing that if if a type has two type parameters, then you can also write this like this. So you can put put the map over here, right? It's the same same code. It's just syntax sugar, syntactic sugar. Okay. So, but if we go with this, like basically this means that I just want to have a function that I like give this tuple. And um, and it produces a rate, okay? So I can just do this, and it becomes this function. It's just that to be more explicit that this is a tuple, I also need to do to do this, because otherwise it's going to be a function with just two parameters, okay? 
So this is it, okay? Okay? So this is what I want to have. Like, this is the kind of client I want to have. And the implementation of this is going to be some map, right? So once we have, like, object, like, currency, uh, fetch a client, right? And metals will do this thing for... Whoa! No, 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 no. This is not what I want this to do. Well, actually, why not? Why not? Let's keep it there. Okay. So, like, the implementation of this... Okay. Same pattern, right? So make, blah, 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 currency, fetcher, client. Um, I should at some point create a template for this. It's going to be new and like this thing is going to be here. This is where we're actually going to use some library that is going to, uh, to implement this for us, right? So there's going to be like a lazy val and for now we're just going to do like a map, map empty. Okay? Because a map fits exactly into this. Into this... Um, uh, shape because maps in Scala they um, they extend functions technically partial functions but in our case it doesn't really matter okay so over here we're gonna write the code that will actually go to some API and do some stuff okay and then what once it comes back uh, well we're just gonna call it right so we're gonna do client dot uh, you know get rates and it's still called get rates too it should be just called get rates get rates get rates and um okay so get rates correct um so so we're gonna cache this one we're gonna say rates right um and now we're gonna say well rates and then we're going to need it to give it a tuple, right? So we're going to do from uh, to string to to string, and it's going to give us a rate, okay? Because like rates is a map, or technically it's a function, right? To give it to zero rate. Okay, well, let's call the function. I don't like something about this. Because I don't want I don't want it to fetch rates every time I call a rate. But we're gonna call a rate once, right? No, we're not. Like the issue is that it's it's super hard for me to think like in like in such a like hacky way. Um, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Like th this is not the issue, of course. Um, it's just that um, like I'm so not used to think in like this stateful fashion. Um, of course, you know, I just like you know put it here or like here, and now you have like access to these rates. And you know, probably because we're just hacking, probably we're also gonna do this. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna stay like this. So technically, this is not a currency fetch. This is like currencies or something like this. I'm just so like, what's the opposite of used? Like I'm so not. Hey man, so I'm just so like not used to like think in such a hacky way. It's super hard for me. Um, just to, to like know like which layer I'm at. Uh, what should I do? What should I? Because like technically this is not a fetcher anymore. This is just like currencies. Um, whatever. <laughs> let's call this one. Let's just call this one rates. And uh, and this one will actually be called like this one is gonna be called like currency fetcher. Okay. Metals actually did it did a really nice job. Did you see how fast it like changed them? It's a super tiny part. Like like I noticed that metals works really well in a in a uh, single build, right? If you have a multi build, it's a little bit more uh, um, finicky sometimes.
All right. And later we would need to like cache stuff and, and things. All right. So cool. Let's start. Um, let's start messing with some um, some API. So first, uh, I believe the last time we already found it actually. So current currency, yeah, currency API free. Yep. So we found this thing, and it basically says that if you get uh, like it says like get free API key. I actually might might have an account uh, with this. Uh, yes. Okay. So hundred requests. That's fine. Uh, hundred requests monthly. What? What do I mean? So do I have hundred requests per day or per month? Wow, the first plan is called gold. <laughs> All right, um, so let's subscribe for this. I believe I might actually even have it. Like, I remember using this thing like a long time ago. Yay, okay. Um, see API documentation. A quick start. Okay, this is a simple API. Like, why do we need like all of this stuff? Live demo, blah. Okay, go away. Uh, authentication accounts page. There we go. Actually, like this is what we need. Like the endpoints. Uh, get kind of currency conversion. Hold on. Um, currency convert. By the way, guys, um, if I feel like it, we still have time, I'm gonna show you an awesome tool. Uh, I'm actually in talks with it was a company that creates this tool. Um, uh, that is going to change your life when it comes to like environment variables and i'm going to make a couple of videos for them okay because we're going to have like an environment variable over here and i'm going to show you a couple of really cool ways how you can deal with this i'm going through category theory for programmers who are uh, uh, about to sh uh, these days any ideas how much help it will be in fp and scala i'll go through it anyways but i want to hear people's ideas uh it really depends like what what your goal is because i for example haven't read it uh, I have I have watched his playlist on YouTube, and I believe like for more than an average programmer, this is already enough. Um, category theory is absolutely not a prerequisite to understand functional programming. Category theory is only well not only, it is just going to give you another angle of how to think about programs. That's all, right? It is absolutely not a prerequisite to learn uh, functional programming. In fact, I just made a functional programming playlist. Like watch it, you, you're good. Okay, um, but if you want to be, you know, if you want to teach, if you want to explain things to other people, it's always it's always good to have like another angle, and uh, it is going to, in general, it is going to make you a better programmer. Um, however, life is short, right? I always, uh, well, actually, never did this, but I always have this example in my head, and one day I want to make a video about it. There is a game um, similar to Diablo uh, called Path of Exile. And um, um, and you you start like you, you start with without um, you kind of start like so, so there's like this skill tree that I'm gonna uh, that I'm gonna show you okay like view tree I thought we are already viewing the tree like is there a way to go like full screen full screen there we go okay. So like this is the this is the skill tree like right so you play like a like this is like a role playing game you start with some character sort of like in Diablo like usually you would pick a uh, what is it called like a race or uh, you would pick a like a kind of character right and then this kind of character would have his tree and you would like you would still have choices there uh, in Path of Exile it works slightly differently you technically don't don't pick anything like and you, you would start like here in the middle. I believe if you do pick something, you're just starting like in one of those, like somewhere like here, uh, here, here. No, I believe it's like six of them, right? So you will start like like here, here, here. So this is like the middle, right? So you basically start closer to the skills that are important to you, right? So for example, like if you're like over here, um, um, hold up, uh, how are they called? Maybe start here. I 
I don't know. The, the point is that, like, like for example, look like this one. Like, this one is, like, about movement and speed, right? So if you hear, like, evasion mastery, so you kind of become, like, a rogue. You play, like, a rogue character or something like this. And so even, like, as a character like this, you can kind of go, like, this route for probably this is, like, what? Supreme Eagle and, like, damage over time, blah, blah, blah. Leech, like, things like this. Like, sort of, like, probably, like, like physical like um, agility attributes or you can go like a little bit more here to go to like vitality and stuff like this so you kind of so you have a choice you can like as a character you can develop yourself like a little bit like to the side so you can mix your character if you wanted to and so whenever you learn new things in real life it's very similar to this you cannot learn the entire tree right this is not how life works that's not how game we have the how the game of life works right so even like if you go to your direction you know, you still cannot have everything. You still have to pick a path, you know, a path in the street, okay? And so category theory is one of those things that is like highly optional. It's a nice to have. It is absolutely not a prerequisite. That was a very long tangent. Um, hi, Vlad. Thanks for all your videos. Really appreciate the uh, time and effort you spent to share all your knowledge for free. This is a lot of work. Thanks. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, anytime. Uh, keep asking questions. Again, remember, like, uh, this is only a secondary goal to actually finish this thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, ask questions. Okay, so, uh, currency conversion endpoint, which can be used to convert any amount from one currency to another. In order to convert currencies, please use the API's convert endpoint, append the from and two parameters and set them to your preferred base and target currency code. So I believe that if we do this, uh, we're, going to, we're going to end up uh, sending six uh, requests. This is not what we need. Um, probably, right? So you're gonna give it the amount. Uh, yeah, and also like you give it the amount. Okay, so this is not what we need. Um, probably this is what we need. Get latest real-time exchange rate data updated every 60 minutes every 10 minutes or every 60 seconds Wh who wrote this like okay 60 minutes okay sorry okay i thought okay my bad okay so either either every hour or 10 minutes or 60 seconds okay okay so base is optional this is good because we don't have a base uh, symbols optional enter a list of comma separate currency codes to limit output okay so this is good so we don't need to transfer everything okay um okay i don't need javascript i need like curl there you go okay so i believe that this is what we need so you give it some api key um symbols okay so how do i give it symbols uh returns okay base Oh shit, hold on. If it's optional, it means they're gonna put USD in there. Man, I think we cannot avoid. I think we cannot avoid making six requests. I mean, we can do some math ourselves, right? So we can do like half of the requests. But it's fine. Like six requests, it's fine. All right, so let's go like live demo. Uh, let's do like curl. Okay, like run code. Is it running with my key or is it some demo key? Yeah, okay, so see like it, it shows the base like randomly chose the base and set it to euros. Okay, so first of all, let's try. Why can I not? I thought I should be able to like type here. Ah, oh, fine. In fact, we're probably gonna do insomnia. Um, hold up a sec, let me open insomnia and um, um, make sure that I'm in, I'm not in my work, um, workspace. Ba, 
ba, ba, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, so let's go and create um, dismiss. Okay, so I'm going to create request collection. I'm going to call it dev inside you. Okay, and there we go. Okay. Okay, so um, new environment. Well, actually, no, hold on. Like, if we start doing this, then we're going to start using my key. And I don't want to, I don't want that. I want to be able to, like, why can I not type here? Copy. Okay, great. Maybe I can only change it, like, in JavaScript. Why can I not change this? I thought I should, be, I, I thought I would be able to change it. Play around interactively with real values and run code. Okay, well, technically, it doesn't say that I'm going to be able to change it. All right, fine. Um, so I guess I'll need my key. Um, Authentication. Counts page. Uh, okay, so this is my API key. Uh, usually, like during live streams, like you wouldn't show API keys, but like this is an API key to like get currency. So if you want to steal mine, go steal mine. You know, I don't care. Um, copy to clipboard. Um, so no environment. Um, I should probably have called it like for. Okay, whatever. Uh, manage environments. And it's just going to be the base environment. I'm just going to I'm just going to do like in a hacky way. So this environment is going to be like a, a currency rate fetcher. Like this. And this is just going to be like a key. This is my key. Oh Jesus, I pressed escape. Key. This is my key. Um, yeah, this is JSON, so the key needs to be like this. Okay, done. All right. So now I can. Um, just join. What have we learned today? Uh, not much. Um, so, so this is like a beginner uh, thing. Like in, in like the last time um, we started a tiny project, and this is just a V two. Um, so we're just like finishing it. It's a tiny project that. Uh, basically like an expense calculator uh, like we give it a um, uh, we give it this all right which is just like a CSV with like description and like three currencies uh, the output currently is this right so it converts every each individual currency into all the others and then sums them up okay so right now we're playing around with uh, with an API that will allow us to fetch the uh, to fetch the rates so this is going to be an HTTP request for, uh, well, where was this thing? Get convert. Get latest. There we go. So maybe Insomnia can actually, can actually go straight from curl. Is there, by the way, we should probably have a folder for uh, rate, uh, like currency rate fetcher. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it in there. Inside, come on. What the hell? There we go. All right. Is there a way to like import it instead of like typing it? Body. I 
It has to be a way to import curl into insomnia. Because I don't want to type it all out. Maybe there's a here. Come on. Uh, insomnia import curl. It has to be a way for sure. Uh, do we need to watch a YouTube video for this one? Yeah, blah, blah. Wait, what? You just pasted it? Oh, you can just paste it in the in the thing. Oh, nice. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Very counterintuitive, but hey. I recall you had said sometimes that you were going to switch to Vim. Uh, is it happening? Ah... Uh, Dude, don't make me con don't make me don't force me to set up my spend my entire vacation just like configuring Vim. <laughs> like I have I have a two weeks vacation. I don't want to. Like I configured Vim like two years ago, but then they broke like everything, everything, everything. And so like love to, uh, but I'm fine with just using like so this is not just Vim key bindings. This is actually an embedded version of Vim. Okay, so um. Like, for example, I have a pl plugin, like if I press F, it shows me like to which key to go. And it works in VS Code as well, like see these underscores. It comes from the fact that in my Vim, I actually have... Uh... So this is not some emulation, this is like really embedded Vim. And for now, it's like totally fine for me. It's like barely works and it's like whatever, okay? Okay, so we have this thing here. Um, so it put like the query in there. And we can put the symbols, we can put the base, and uh, okay, put the API key like this. So we can we can use like the environment variable if I remember how to freaking do this. No, I need to select the environment. Hold on. Ta da. Key. There we go. Okay. So now if we send it, it should already work. It's just that I want to constrain this. I, I'm kind of like worried that we're going to spend like these 100 requests like way too fast. So we probably will need to implement caching uh, faster than I thought. Like 100 requests, like what is this? Like give me like a thousand, you know, like what the hell? I can't even play around with it properly. Okay, symbols. So let's try to do like BRL. How do I even pass them? Like this? So VRL, USD, uh, no, EOR, USD. Actually, let's read about this before we like mess around. Also overwriting the curly brackets. Like this is so ridiculous, like like string, right? Like, like this is the only example that I actually need to see. I need to see how do you pass the symbols. You know, is it a, is an is it an array? Is it with curly like with with without? Is it like this? Is it like how does it work? Okay, let's let, let's try without first. Invalid base currency. Okay, so let's do uh, let's do USD. Okay. So if I just go like this, is it gonna limit them? No, it's not, it's fucking dying. God damn. Yeah. So right now it does like this. Oh no, it worked. How the hell did it take like longer? Okay. So, in terms of playing around, we're done. <laughs> it works, right? So one dollar is around like five BRL is around like nine point eight euros and blah blah USD. Okay. So we did like two successful requests, right? We're we're counting, right? <laughs> we have ninety eight left. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go pee real quick and then we're gonna uh, work with this. Uh, where's my button? There we go.
All right, I'm back. Let me know if this this sound, like from this these opening gates, it's the first time that I enable it. Let me know if it's like too loud. I just wanted to see. It like, it, it or it's already annoying me, for example. <laughs> All right, so we really need caching. Uh, but before we even, even, we even do caching, let's just like grab this and um, represent this in Scala. So um, just hacking, so we don't need to, I was actually surprised, it's just like, nice. So um, okay, so it's gonna be a final case class uh, rate, and it's gonna have the base, which is going to be a string. Um, and um, date. So this date is it's probably when it was last fetched. Like when we're gonna do caching, we need to know when we fetched it. But there's a difference between when we fetch it and when they fetched it. Um, but honestly, like for a script, it doesn't really matter. So, now we should still keep both. Okay. So remember, like everything here is is raw, okay? So date is also a string. Um, by the way, who sends date like this? Oh no, there's a timestamp. Okay, so okay, because there's a timestamp. I'm not gonna trust this API was a date. Because like, here's the thing, like when we're gonna cache it, we're gonna call the file, uh, we're, we're gonna use this date uh, in a file name. And in all honest, honesty, I'm also going to use this formatting because I like it. But I don't wanna rely on that. Um, like if they change this formatting for some reason, I'm not gonna be able to find the file. And I don't wanna debug the script like two years from now just because they felt like changing. So it's always better to grab the timestamp. Uh, timestamp and it looks like it's a long okay so let's actually let's keep this like this okay um, okay so let's call this one response there's only one response so we were making only one request so we're just gonna call it like response okay and now we're gonna have like rates uh, which is a list of strings no, it's not. So this is a rate. We already have a rate outside. So we're gonna do uh, object raw like this. And so this is this, okay? And so this rate is going to refer not to like this type alias for a big decimal, but it's going to refer to this rate. Okay, and it's gonna be a list, right? So it's gonna be a list of Technically, it's a set. No, it's a map. No. How do we want to have it? Let's just keep it simple. So the rate is going to be just... Just a map. of string and I want to par parse it like straight into the big decimal so that we don't don't lose it so this and this is two okay so it's a list of so 
So let's do this, right? Rates. You know what? Let's actually do. Let's actually do this. This way, we're not gonna need like to do anything weird. Okay. just that whatever we're going to use to parse the JSON it's probably going to put this thing into into a case class where these are going to be like the field names now oh, whatever we'll, maybe we'll write our own codec So this is the response. So now over here we need to So we're going to make the API call, right? Which is going to be like a lazy val make API call. Probably should be a def even though it doesn't like this is like in functional programming this wouldn't this wouldn't make a difference but like whatever make api call and it's just gonna it really depends which library we're going to use but we're going to like block and wait because it's just a hacky script and i don't care um and it's gonna give us the response okay so it's a private def make api call let's also do this response it's so weird like on one hand like it's a hacky script and on the other on the other hand i'm kind of teaching you guys and i don't want you to go and do this right because like like I, I i said this already many times like in this during this stream and during the previous stream like i'm gonna beat this horse to death it's an insane difference between like hacking something together and doing something for like production uh and not only production but something that you're going to maintain like i'm not going to maintain this thing like we're going to write it once and it's going to work until until this api breaks right this this uh, uh, currency rate API breaks, right? And then I'm going to replace the API. So I'm going to do this like once every 10 years, if I even need this thing in 10 years, and that's it. Okay. So like, how am I going to make the HTTP call? Like, I don't care uh, right now. Okay. So raw response. Okay. So we're going to make the API call. Um, like this is going to be the response. Okay. Let's produce our map somehow okay so um so now we need to convert this response into our map okay so we're going to like i'm not going to write the code for caching yet so we're going to run it once without caching just so that like everything works okay so we're just going to go and say response dot rates Actually, we need to make three API calls for, for different base. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, ask questions. Like, again, like the, the purpose of the stream is so that beginners can ask questions. It's only a secondary goal to actually finish writing this code. Okay. So if you're a scholar beginner, like whatever, just ask questions all the time. Even like the, the only rule is there is no stupid question. There are no silly questions. Okay. So we actually need to make the API calls with different bases. Okay. So, right, so this is a base, uh, which is a string, okay? So, um, it's a common practice to do something like this. Uh, actually, maybe, maybe Scala already has this built in, Scala 3. What? There are no methods? Is there some like... Okay, because it's top level definition maybe. Uh, hold on. Um, currency dot... Values. There we go. Okay. It's an array. Jesus. Arrays to string. 
Joey. Oh, Java die in hell. Um, this is not Java Udo. What does it say? What's the message? Maybe it's not too string. Given an array of currency. Okay, go to hell. Like Java can die in hell, seriously. Like, like whatever. Okay, so these are our currencies. You want to be nice once, and you can't even do that. Uh, how was it called? Values. Okay. So this is what we have: like currency dot values. Uh, for each value, we're going to make an API call. Uh, Java string works the same in Scala. Uh, I guess, but nobody will use it in, in Scala. Uh, unrelated to Scala, please ignore it. Well, uh, what's the VS Code plugin highlighting, highlighting the to-dos? Uh, it's not a plugin. <laughs> we, just grabbed the, we just grabbed the Unicode character uh, for the check mark and we just inserted it. Um, oh, hold on. Um, I actually do have a plugin for for to dos, but that's not it. Okay, uh, so first of all, like this is a check mark character, right? So we just Google Google like Unicode character table, and like find this one and click copy, insert it into, uh, I don't know, like here, right? Check mark. Uh, but I actually do have a plugin for um, uh, for to dos. Um, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> um, I don't see it here. Is there more? To do's, there we go. The one that I actually cared about. Uh, it's here, right? So if you have like um, to do, uh, do stuff, um, obviously it needs to be a comment, right? Uh, then it will be he appear here, you know? Do stuff right like usually what i do is like i put my name in there like in the production code base and then i can filter by my name right so um so if i remove this and i go like do more stuff here all right and then if i go filter somehow uh and i just do my name then it just shows me only my to-dos like this is how i this is how i do this in production um yeah, there's a way also to like show it as a list. Um, I don't know, there's a way to like tag things. Anyway, it's just a to-do plugin um, and I found it by searching for to-do and it's called, this one is called to-do tree, but there's like many others. See, there's like to-do highlight that has like 2.7 million uh, downloads people are happy with it so like every every editor has like millions of these to do um things um anyway um what were we doing oh yeah we were doing this okay so um what is the problem here found a string to response required currency to respond uh correct so i'm gonna put like a currency in here for now Okay, so, so now we have a response of, you know, an array of responses. Um, we're gonna do to list. In fact, yeah, we don't, we don't need to remember with which one we called it because, in the, it, because it will come back in the response. It will come. Okay, so now, um, assuming that we have this, then we're gonna go like response dot okay we cannot do we cannot do response dot rates so we need to go so we're converting a list into a map okay 
And anytime you need to do this in functional programming, this is a fold, okay? It just says the question is that, like, are we gonna do like all the nasty stuff in one gigantic fold? Or are we gonna do it step by step? And the first uh, step should always be the hacky way. Do everything in one gigantic fold and then clean it up, okay? So we're gonna take the response and we're gonna do fold left, okay? So the end result, turn this thing. And therefore this end result will be inferred for us so we're going to start with an empty empty map right like this thing like every map in scala extends a partial function this is a total function which is fine so this is how we're starting okay now um in the fold left over here what we have is whatever we're accumulating and the current value okay so technically this is uh uh, what is it called? Uh, let's just call it current current response. Okay, so what we're accumulating is this map, right? So the accumulation is going to become the result. Okay. So we're creating a map. So we're taking the accumulation and we're calling. Uh, I believe, like, I don't like, like, the symbolic method, so I believe we call updated, okay? So we just give it key value, okay? So the key value is going to be current response dot uh, base. And um, current response dot base. And the value is going to be current response dot rates and this is actually not correct so remember like our key has two things so our key is going to be a tuple from it's like from and then to and we should probably start with going with mapping over the rates. Okay, so we actually what we need to do is we need to do current response dot rates. And then we're going to have another fold left over here. And we're going to start with what was the accumulation. And then inside of it, we're going to have a case accumulation again. It's going to be shadowed, so it's fine. Current rate. Okay. And now this thing is going to be over here. Just for you guys, I'm not going to shadow it. So I'm going to say ACC2, so that is just more clear which one is which, okay? So this function is our accumulator, and this entire accumulator is going to fold. We're starting with the current value of the accumulator, okay? Um, we're going through the rates over here, and we're just going to, to like update, and then we're inserting like the base, and then... And then... This is a tuple of no here. Like this one is a tuple of you know string and big decimal. Okay, so this is the two uh, and um, and rate. Okay, and so it's like this, comma. Okay, so ACC two is a map of like it's uh it's because we have like these these things over here so now it's it should be able to understand them yeah there we go okay so now everything is inferred for us um but the index is not a pair um uh which which one um response is going to be singular so it's folding on the rates alone uh, will be required. Mm, 
no so we need to do we need to do three requests because like the way this works remember in insomnia we need to specify the base right and by the way we we, we might even not need to grab this but i think it's it's just easier to do this like this okay so we need to do three requests um you've already fixed yeah yeah so we need to do three requests so one is we're going like from dollars to these three the next one is going to be from euros to go into these three and the, and the third one is going to be from from uh brazilian real to go to go to this three right so um like this thing over here right so it's, it's actually grouped slightly differently over here so basically Let's go like this. Okay. So these are like the, the three requests that we need to do, right? This, this, one, basis. Okay. And technically like this one as well, right? But that's, that's not the point. Let me actually revert. Because we're going to throw this out later anyway. So there's no point in reverting it, but yeah. Anyway. So, um... Like, this is hard to read, right? Like, it was relatively trivial for me to write because, like, in my times, but if I'm going to look at this, like, in a year, I'm not going to understand it. Uh, the good thing is that I'm not going to look at this in a year. I don't care, right? So this is not a production level thing that we need to maintain. Okay? So we're pretty much done over here. Um, so except for caching and actually making the request, this is kind of fine, Okay? Let me actually double check over here. Yeah, so we didn't even need to. I don't even know if we need to go through this like string back and forth. Um, Again, like as I already mentioned, like like an hour ago or something, it is so hard for me to think about this code when everything is like smashed together. Um, this way, I don't know which which things are on which layer, uh, and whatever. Okay. Um, probably for now. For now, you know, let's just not overcomplicate this. Let's just go like this. Um, Okay, and so like uh, find the string, change go next to currency. Okay, so like this, like this, like this, like that. And like okay, so found string string required currency currency. Uh, okay, so yeah, so yeah, so this is where we would need to like this is yeah So this is exactly what I needed what I wanted to avoid like so maybe I will actually revert what I just did not right now Because like at this layer, I want to have like raw stuff um, Like I don't want to Yeah, I want to revert this. I like this, okay. All right, let's actually make the API call. Um, well, actually, let's not even make it. Let's, um, let's go first and do this here, right? So how many times do we call it rate? Converted. Okay, we call it many times. Um, so let's basically over here. We're going to say that we need we need the rates. Like the rates 
the race is already doing like this caching thing for us which is something that i really hated to do but like it's so hard to think about it like this right now but okay and so over here we're just gonna do like rates rates that rate okay so now this means that Like this is this is becoming a problem that this whole thing is a script because now we need to like pass it along all the time like this and no we're not gonna do like implicit stuff here oh why why me okay so rates please do it here what was the j Fine, I'm gonna do it myself. Uh, to during my own vim. Fine. Okay. So now, like at the very bottom, when we're doing transformed, like we need to give it the right, and the rates are going to be here. So uh, we need to give it the client, right? And the client is also going to be here. Currency fetcher dot make. All right, there we go. So now, like, once we're going to um, start hacking on this thing, we're going to. We're going to improve this constructor okay so the first thing is going to be the environment variable like for now in the beginning we're going to hard code it and um as I already mentioned like i don't care about you guys like i don't mind that you guys like see the value um this is just like for learning so managed environments so this is the uh key so i'm gonna say um i'm gonna call it the api token it's usually how it's called okay like if we have some time at the end today, I'll show you like a cool way to like deal with uh, environment variables. Okay, so ba, 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 ba. Uh, it's gonna be here. API token, which is a string. All right, cool. So now we need to decide which library to use to um, to do an HTTP request. Uh, there are many options. Um, maybe you guys want me to use one. Like maybe we can use like whatever is built into Java. And then just like manually parse it. No, fuck no. That's not what I'm going to do. Actually, so so I have like two two things that I wanted to play around with. One is like um, Howie stuff. Um, because like he, he did like a lot of... Uh, like because it's perfect like for scripting. Maybe Maybe this is what we're going to do. So, uh, yeah, and another one would be like Zio. Like, I don't even know if Zio HTTP has a client. Probably does. Or whatever it's called, because there's like two of them, right? There's like Zio HTTP and, and something else. Let me, let me uh, grab... Um, how do you even find it? Uh, let's do this. Let's do a Scala HTTP client. What is that? No, 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 no. Um, because we don't need like the big guns like SCTP or like Tapir or like Z or blah, blah. I'm looking for the one from um, Howie. Uh, SCTP, SCTP, blah, blah, blah. I believe this is the one that I need. This is the one that is this one is perfect for hacking <laughs> yeah this one scala port or the popular python request http client perfect 
this is what we need um, yeah it's also on my to-do list to make a review of this book but first I need to read it um, getting started there we go okay so this is what we need Seven zero, the latest no seven one is the latest uh build anyway, i forgot to do one thing um i actually want because this, we're just hacking i'm actually gonna remove this explicit nulls thing all right let me let me see if um if sbt is happy hold on Because I don't even know if it's published for Scala 3. It should be. It's been around for long enough. Perfect. It works. Okay. So, um, like the thing that... Guys, is that now... Whoa. whoa, whoa. Um... Oh, I actually have this Thunder Client installed. I've actually never, um, never used it, so I'm going to uninstall it. Um, actually, let me show it to you first because maybe you guys want to use it. Thunder Client view shows it's basically like a, it can basically send the HTTP request for you guys. So instead of using Insomnia, uh, you know, you would do it, and there's like environment variables and blah blah. But I've never used it. Like, I, I just wanted to like toy around with it, but people like it. See, like, million downloads, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. Uninstall. I don't use, I don't know, required. Uh, did Metals finish? I believe it did. Uh, yeah, exactly. So how how is his first name? Uh, Lee is his last name. Um... All right, so now that I did this, I should not need this dot and end thing. Not that one. Like this one over here, right? Like this end end thing. Um, great. It's basically does a null check and then um, throws stuff. So, oh. okay. See, so now it doesn't bark at us anymore. Okay. Like, again, a like huge difference between um, something locally and, uh, like, locally, like, as a script and actually doing something for production. All right. So, uh, we have it. Cool. Okay, so this is probably too basic. But yeah, why not start here? Um, it's just that, like, I'm not gonna parse JSON myself. Um, yeah, we don't need this. So we're gonna have a get request. It's there. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, so this is this is for setting values. Okay. So this is likely enough. Um, has he written a lot of libraries since you were uh, trying to find one? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, he has, like, an entire ecosystem. I actually wanted to make a video about, like, uh, the Scala ecosystem and, like, talking about, like, people like him. He has a lot of libraries. Um, a lot. Um, like, are, are you completely new to Scala? Like, if you are, then I can talk about li about this a little bit more. Uh, okay, so it looks like this is what we... Oh no, hold on, the R is the response. How do I set the things in the in the testing parameters? There we go, okay. Okay, so this is already enough, I think. Okay, so this should already be enough. So there's probably like headers and stuff, I guess this is what we need. Um, exactly. Yeah, I haven't. I, I didn't have time to play with SBT yet. 
Okay, so okay, so just like this thing over here. Uh, for now, let's return like question marks. Oh wow, it even works without imports. How sick is that? This is really nice. No, it says request not found, but get is found. Okay, so request is a package. This is really awesome. It even works without imports. Like this is exactly what I needed right now. I didn't want to like set up like a bunch of like millions of things. I just wanted it to work. And so I'm going to make it work. Uh, okay. So this is where we're going. Like this. Um, params. Okay. So, so this is like symbols, right? Um, so this is like symbols. What is wrong with me? Symbols. Okay. And this is going to be the base, right? So base and symbols. Okay. Uh, base is base to a string. Um, In fact, over here, we could actually go with um, um, like currency dot values, um, make string, comma space, like this, right? Like this is how it was with the spaces and everything. Yeah, I can't believe it worked on the first try. Uh, okay, so this is the params, and now all I need to do is I need to pass in the header, right, which is going to be API key. Um, actually, I want to stop running now. Uh, I just want to compile because we're limited to like, we have 98 requests left, guys. Um, so, we for now. Okay. Actually, like probably all this time that I was saving, it already sent a couple of requests. Damn it. Anyway, uh, so there's probably like headers, right? I'm just guessing. There, there's for sure headers, uh, which is going to be probably a map as well, and it's and um, this is going to be our. Uh, API token, I believe, right? API token, that's how I called it. API. Hold up, comma, like this. Yeah, I guessed correctly. Okay, so uh, what is the return? Is it a future? Oh, it's just like, oh, nice. It's blocking, perfect. For scripts, awesome. Um. So we're going to call a response. Okay. Uh, but now how do I make JSON out of it? Actually, maybe Insomnia, like, put something else that I also need. No, just this. Okay, so how do I get JSON out of this? Uh, you just recently started learning and exploring things about FP and Scala. I recall that I had seen a book by Himalaya. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so if we like scroll up, like this is the book, Hands on Scala Programming. Uh, I haven't read it, but once I read it, I will, I, will, um, I will review it for sure. Like everybody loved it, but basically it's like, so he, he works for a company called Databricks and Databricks is like, sort of like an exceptional com company uh, when it comes to the Scala ecosystem. Like a lot of the Scala ecosystem either do functional programming or they do this whole called light pen stack, which is like Akka and stuff. Uh, but Databricks doesn't do any of those, right? So they just like, they don't have like Scala pros. They just like hire like just good programmers and they just like, they, they, they use like a very minimal um, uh, subset of Scala's features. And so they're very happy like this. 
And so he created like gazillions of libraries for this. Like a lot of them are like Python ports. So Python has a library called requests. And this is like the port of that library. Okay, so just make a request, buy, have a response, whatever. It's blocking or whatever for tiny applications. It's freaking awesome. It's exactly what I needed. Okay. Um, and like, for example, even right now, like I'm looking at like how to get like JSON out of it. And I know that he, he has a library for, um, uh, for parsing JSON. I just forgot. Um, ah, look. Yeah. So probably we can look at this blog post, but you know, it's, we can probably end in JSON. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so this is for posting. Yeah, so the library is called uJSON or muJSON. I don't know, I think it's uJSON. Okay. It's trivial to use it together with any other third party JSON library like uJSON. So. He probably has a no multiple uploads. Okay, so let's go here. UJs. Oh. So we can probably go. He, it was probably renamed or even like moved to another organization. Um, because like he's not he's not maintaining this thing alone anymore. Um. Maybe it's even faster to just go like Scala U JSON. Okay, this is the just a post. U pickle. Yeah, so see this is the old one. So it probably moved to another organization. I, I don't know where it is. Uh okay, so maybe I should search for Scala U pickle. Okay, yeah, so this is the new organization. Com Howie. Okay. So documentation, and there we go. So this is what we need, um, uh, build. Okay, so SBT, um, I just do updates. We're a little bit late. So I, 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 I didn't want to stream today for longer than four hours. We have only one and a half hours late. And so, um, okay, let's also see if there's a new version. Okay, so there's a two zero zero. Let's call it test. Okay, so so this is a two dot zero dot zero, and not that we care. What was it? Teen, right? So we're not gonna write tests anyway, but why not? Since we're already already reloading. So okay, update. Okay, let's do an up to date again. Also, there was a like this one about bloop, like this one over here. So if I just do um, if I just do br over here, which is a um, which is an alias for like bloop exit and bloop about. So now it's three. And so now if we connect to build server and also uh, also like re-import the build, show the logs, it's going to be connected to the 
Why why am I scrolling? There you go. There you go. Bloop 1.53. Okay, compile. This also means that if I were to run, you know, up to date again over here, this will disappear. I thought it would disappear. Interesting, like where? I believe like the the metals version didn't switch to it yet. But whatever, it's gonna work with 1.53 anyway. All right, so uh, we're over here and we need to, um, we need to figure out how to work with this library. Okay, so you just go like this. You can write and you can read. Oh yeah, so it looks like all we need is read. I think if we just hack it together, we'll be fine. Okay, there we go. So we can, okay, so this is what I need. This is what we need. Okay. Did I just copy this? No, I didn't, right? So my thing is the response. And I'm not sure why I did. I needed to do this. So I'm just gonna do this, read writer, and just import everything. I cannot believe that it just like compiles, like on the first try. Okay, now this doesn't mean that it will be able to actually parse it like this because like remember the response is like this so this is um like usually this would be an object right it would be a case class with like three fields um, so we will for sure need to do something to convert this into this map i'm thinking like instead of like learning the upical library okay i use biobu uh which is a wrapper around tmux and i have a video about it you might want to check it out um So if you go to my YouTube channel and you just type in like Beobo, uh, here I have two videos about it, like how it works and how to set it up. All right, so yeah, um, like 99.99% of the things that I'm using in my in my streams or videos, I have already made a video about it. Like I made a conscious decision, like in the beginning of this video, I decided not to use fancy tools, and then I said, "Damn it, but I need those fancy tools." And so I made video about each tool before I started using it. So if you see me using something like uh, Git aliases, something with ZSH, something with Tmux, I have a video about it. Um, all right, so we have we have two choices. Either we uh, we keep reading the documentation, which is kind of boring, and we figure out like how to teach it to um, to put like this case class over here with three fields into a map. Or we have another case class and just like let it parse it and then be happy about it and then um, just convert it into another. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually want to see if it even works. Like maybe it already just works and we don't know it. Okay. So. So all I need to do, which is. Yeah, it is here. Um, I need to read. I can just call it read, right? So if I have, if I have this thing uh, at the top, 
like this. Then, and by the way, like in, in Scala 3, you actually don't, don't do this anymore. Like you can just go here and just say given, given like this. Um, just, you know, copy paste it and forgot about it. Um, so now you don't need a name and you don't need to worry about the fact that it's a valor, a lazy valor or a def, whatever. You just do it like this and that's it. Um, so now like all I need to do is I need to say a read a response and the type will be figured out for me, right? So it, it automatically figured out that the type is going to be like this response. And this is it. So we're going to have, actually we're gonna go like pipe read. Let's see if it works like this. Ah, oh, man, that would have been so cool. Okay, but fine. Um, so let's return it to, like, this was, like, a, a response. And, well, actually, hold on. Just so that I'm sure that type inference is the issue. Oh, what? Wait, so this get returns. What? I thought it returned the response. Why was this thing? Oh yeah, we actually need the body, right? Or something like this, right? Um, I guess, what, like data? Wait, hold on. He probably has this like in the... Hold on, like in his examples, like the, f the very first example was about it, right? It was... Like, do I need to convert? Okay, just text. Okay, this is what, what we need, text. Fine. Yeah, so it's probably like a UTF text, right? How did it work before? Interesting, hold on. Okay, so there's something built into... Okay, so he put like a lot of things around this thing so that it knows how to work. So, so you don't need to do like text and blah. Okay, good. Um, um, no, this is just a Scala 3 thing. So in Scala 2, it used to be underscore. Now they change it to star or an asterisk. Um, also like the renamings, right? So like in the beginning, like he had what he had like this, uh, what like read, read writer to like RW, like in Scala three, you can just say as like, like this, right? Similar to Python. Um, okay. So I just want to like, I cannot believe that this is going to work the first on the first try, okay? So we're gonna do like tap print line over here and also over here as well. Okay? So... What the? Just because I added a tap? Okay, so now we probably have an issue with tap inference. Um, 
Okay, whatever. Result. And now we're getting the result back. Yeah, so this is a... This is a type inference issue for sure. Okay. So just like... so. Now this color compiler wasn't able to figure out that okay we're talking about this type over here. Let's try running it. It's like like for sure it's going to explode in our face, but still. Okay. So so the making of the request was not the problem, right? Like the correct thing came out. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's something about rate limit, limit is a list of 100. Rate limit remaining 95, okay, hoo -hoo. okay, we still, we still have like 95 tries, okay? Um, so. Expected a string and got a number at index one to seven. Okay, so we are only request requesting like the base and these ones and these ones. Let's um, like before we like let, let's just like do like how this thing wants it, uh, wants us to do it. So we're going to move this thing out like like here. Okay? So now we have like response and raw response. And the raw response over here is going to have uh rates. Right? And the rates is just going to be a uh final case class rates where we're going to hard code uh, val, you know, BRL, uh, I'm sorry, just like uh, BRL, and it's gonna be a rate. And we're gonna go like this, U well, Euro and USD. Right? They are, sorry, right? BRL, Euro, USD, okay? So it should be able to, to parse like that thing like assuming we give it a codec, right? It, it, like at the top it complains probably because of the codec, right? Okay. I'm ignoring because you said to ignore. Um, okay, so it's not complaining because of this. So like over here, when I'm going to do the raw response, we're going to do like a response. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do like a raw response and then like this is gonna be, okay. Like parsed raw response, it's gonna be that. Right, and so now we're going to construct a response where well, we're going to say now this is something where like chimney would be good so what we're gonna say okay well timestamp is parsed raw response dot timestamp um, the same thing for the base and the rates is now going to be a map right so it's like this um, um, yeah, right. So the race is going to be a map of like these three things, right? Of parsed, raw, response, dot. Well, actually, so it's going to be like BRL. Right, like this, these two things, EUR and USD. 
like this. The response can be encapsulated in an option. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, like, of course, we can do like anything we want, right? Um, the rates. Okay, so now like all we need is a codec um, for for the rates. Okay, so we just like copy this, do that. Um, like this and this is like the rates rates so let's try it like this expect a string got number so maybe this is not the issue 94 left <laughs> okay <laughs> um Actually, hold up. What, what we, sh we should um... ah shit. Like um... like I wanted to like have like a like a raw JSON. Um... Maybe let's let's start there because we have the raw JSON over here, right? So we're gonna copy this. So that we can save a couple of requests, right? So we're just gonna go like this. It's not the same thing, right? Because like this is the whole response, but this is just like the body. Okay, so we're not. So this is going to be just a string. Like, but still. Also, it's my personal preference, like I like to do this. This is something that something crazy that Fira code does over here. Um, okay, so let's say that it's because now I can just run it all the time. Watch. Okay, expected string got a number at one thirteen. Okay, so it's probably somewhere. Oh, so this is probably the parsing like straight into the big decimal. Let's do... No, hold on. Like, I don't get it. We're getting like timestamp, timestamp base and rates. Like timestamp is a number, right? There are no quotes around it. Base is a string, there are quotes around it. Over here, these things. Like it should be like it should be able to parse it into big decimal straight, right? Okay, let's do this. Let's say that. Let's start like super simple, okay? Let's say that we're going to have like just a just a base. It's a string, right? We should be able to, okay? Um, like this. Uh, well, actually, no. So timestamp equals no. Uh, rates equals no. Uh, okay, zero. Negative one. Okay. Okay, so it managed to parse. 
Okay. What about the next one? Let's let's say the timestamp. It managed to part. Okay. So as as predicted, like the issue was the rates. So. Probably, let's see, let's go with a string here. Okay, so we need to go over here and, you know, for now, yank this, paste over here, go like this, and go like that, change to zero. Okay. Why does it say expected strain? So this is not like the raw response, okay? Let's make it end. It's like freaking parse it. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I mentioned this like 1,000 times. We don't care about type safety. This is just a script. This is now how you do production level application. Like, if, if this was a production level application, even the API call itself would be asynchronous. I would not use this library to do this. Uh, it would be an option and there would be error codes and everything. We, we don't care. Like, I just want to make this thing work and then we're happy. Okay. It's for beginners, right? So, yeah. One day we're going to build like some some proper thing that will be actually not just production grade, but it will be actually it will actually run in production. We're going to create like actual projects. You know, we'll create some tools that you guys can actually use, and there we're gonna go like full bananas over engineered. You know. So until then, okay. Cannot okay. So so it parsed it to an integer, so it cannot parse to big decimal somehow. Also, how did it do like 501? What it did is, so it just took like 501, okay? So probably it can parse them into doubles, right? Yeah, so it parsed them into doubles. So all, I need, all we need to figure out is like, why can it not parse it to big decimals? Um. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Big decimals, okay. Support for begin and big decimal. So what up? Why can it not parse it to big decimal? Can it, can it parse it to a string? So it can, cannot do string and it cannot do big decimal, but I really need it to be big decimal. Hell. It expected a string. So this is the thing, like, I have a feeling that it expected, like if I want to parse into big decimal, it expected this to be strings. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, great, but we don't have strings.
New pickle two zero. Getting started. Use one six zero. <laughs> um. Man. I think we need to write our own codec. I really wanted to avoid this. Like, why can't I just like grab something that works? This is unacceptable for a service I'm paying absolutely nothing for. Okay, so I think I can just go and put a... Um, what's bar? Isn't bar some data, like, data thing? Scala bar. I don't care about efficiency. Um, I just want it simple. Okay, like, this is good. You know, the thing is that we're using the, um, uh, like his request response thing. And like the, the cool thing about it is that we can just like give it to it and it will like figure it out. So I think it's like fast to just like implement our own codec before we use this. Yeah, yeah I see now. Yeah, no, like like I, I have videos about Cersei and stuff. Like the point is not to is not to just like make it work. I just wanted to like to use some other library. And I always wanted to try like because like for hacky things I always like read like you know it's so easy to use like his thing. And so I was like, okay, well let me let me use it. So um like like I'm pretty sure, right, is we need to go um uh what are we doing the read? Right. So we're doing the read over here, right? So if I go over here and I say given um a read i can probably just do read right for big decimal equals new no i can just do like with right okay read right why can i not go into read right Is it read writer? So maybe I can just go like a reader. Are we in the right thing? Yes. Like, I know how to do, like, all of these things in Cersei, for example. No, like, I don't want to rewrite this whole thing. Like, it, it already works. Like, I just need to, like, uh, fix this one codec, and that's it. Good question. Um, good question. So this is probably what we're going to do, you know? So we're going to try it for a couple of minutes, and if it doesn't work, then, you know, it's just going to be double. Um, yeah. Um, the thing is that, like, even though it's a script, I actually want to use it. Like the point is that I don't want to, that I'm not going to maintain it. You know, I'm just going to write it once, but I just want I want it to, I want it to work. You know, like technically we're talking about my expenses, right? So if it like makes an error in a couple of cents, who cares, right? But like, but like why, right? <laughs> like why? Um, yeah. Um, hold on, let me read like. Um, Limitations. 
that's fine. Basics, hold on. Okay, show me how to make my own. I don't wanna... Probably I don't need a reader, probably I need some sort of codec thingy. And by the way, you, you guys are asking me to like try out the libraries. Um, I really want to, um, like I hate to avoid like, I, like, like I want to, <laughs> I hate to avoid, I would like to avoid telling you what to do, but like when you're working on uh, these things, like it's so easy to just get hang up on like playing around with libraries right so we're just gonna try it for like a couple of minutes and if it doesn't work it's gonna be a double end of story um this is what i need i think How something is here, you can use a read writer. I just want a reader. I don't care about the writer. Can I also do this with... Can I just do that? Let me try that. Hold on, this is like what? So I should be able to just say read big decimal, right? And then I should be able to do by map. Can I do by map? Oh, I just apply. Let's try it. Let's try how it says it first. Like read. Was it read or reader? Read writer. Okay, so maybe there's a reader. Reader. Okay. I thought it would go the other way around. So, do I need the writer? What? Well, yeah, I need the comb map. But why am I going from you? I should be going from string. Oh, no, it's not from you. Like, this is the thing, right? So my U is going to be some sort of... Uh... I guess I need the one with the ADT, right? Like this one. Like probably like this is what I need. U Jason value. Hold on. I 
I wonder if I need to pattern match or I can just do I can just do numb. No, oh, but it's a double. Like this is the problem. Okay, we're gonna go like this. Okay, call map. So now, like, we need to give it a function from from some JSON. What the hell happened? JSON to. Yeah, we're almost done. Hold on. From JSON to a big decimal, right? So I'm just gonna like shove it in like this. But that's not gonna work, right? Like I was like I just don't know how to work with his a his his AST. Okay. So let's just go like to string. I found. Hold on. Found writer required reader. Well, that's the thing. Like I wanted the reader. Okay. Hold on. Found map writer required writer. God damn it. Read writer, okay. My map. Can I do this? No, we just need a codec for the big decimal. And we'll be all assembled together. Um, so we're basically like doing this now. Read writer for uJSON value. uJSON value. Um, by map. Big decimal. And now we have like this. Okay, so like this one, we don't even care because we're not going to do this. And this one is Jason one, Jason zero. Like what is he doing? One, zero, okay. Dot num, okay. So probably we just need to do some like, something like this. Uh, not found read writer. Read writer, the W is small. Um, yeah, so we cannot use like these curlies. It compiles but it didn't help. So did it even, did, did it even pick it up? Um, print line. Oh yeah. Tap. Mm. Now we can add the tab we need over here. Print line JSON. What? Not found print. Print line. Okay. For so code. So this thing needs to be not here. This needs to be. He. 
here. Okay, there we go. So this was the JSON. Oh, what should I should I have been should I have done like that data or something? Loading what? Come on, the data. No. What is with the what's the problem? Cannot be applied to what? The interesting part is at the bottom. You isn't that value. Ah okay, so like probably like this is a problem, right? Like then it goes like through double and everything works, right? But parse it to double. How is it gonna do this? Um if it matches a number basically if it fits into a double oh this is so weird Why can't can't I just like get the string out of it? Can I just do like that value? Okay, at least that value compiles. Value is any. Great. So I think I think we're almost there. Nice. Okay, we got it. Cool. In where's this? In that found BRL. Rates thirteen. Really? So, um, oh yeah, because this is not the real response. Okay, so I believe this is it, guys. So if I do this. Ta-da! Okay. Cool. So, ten dollars is nine point eight eight two euros. Is this correct? Um. Um. Ten USD two euros. Nine point eight two. Yes. Um, and to Brazilian real BRL 51.64 nice okay um, you see the other ones real quick hold on I need to stop kill it I just want to compile now because we have we have what we have 91 requests left okay um what did i want to do ah yeah i wanted to see so netflix netflix in euros okay so 15 euros to brl for example 15 euros to brl 78.92 Okay, a slight difference. Maybe maybe they already changed. Maybe maybe the one from Google doesn't update as often as uh, as ours. So what was our rate? Seventy-eight 
So we want the one from euros to BRL, like 5.25734. By the way, Ammonite is also from Howie. So 15 times uh, 5.25734. Seventy-eight point eight six. Okay. Okay. So I guess like this one is not. Let's do one. Ah, uh, come on, one euro. Five point two six. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, maybe you could do simply a reader from JSON value, and a bimap to big decimal. Um. Yeah, like this is what I was trying. Um, let's actually let's actually do this. Um, so I'm gonna copy this, uh, paste it over here, and go like this. So like. Here, like, by map was... Like, this is the thing, like, I wanted to do the reader, right? But it felt like I needed to do the writer. Right? So if I do reader... Like it should work like this, right? Reader for some, oh no, okay, hold on. It's the other way around. So this is like big decimal. Probably co map, not map. Yeah, exactly. Like it should probably be a co map. Value is not a member of big decimal. Yeah, so now they're like kind of flipped. So it probably should be co map. Oh, it is map. See, like if I do it like this, they're kind of like switched. Like it's, it was so weird. Like if I if I like right, like so it's it thinks that this is a big decimal. So if I switch them back, like like I did just two seconds ago. Now it says I found a reader of big decimal required a read writer. Okay, hold on. Okay, so this is what I was trying to do, like in the beginning, right? Why didn't it work? Exactly, like this is how I try to do this. So let's run again. We can afford to run it one more time. Okay, it works. Cool. Uh, let's clean everything up. So like this, like that. Can we actually leave out this type? I don't think we can. Yeah, we can't. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is exactly what I tried in the beginning because I knew that we don't care about the writer. Um, like in fact, like even over here, like we don't need the whole, you know, we can just go reader, right? And we're fine, right? Like over here as well, we just need the reader. Why? This is probably like just metals not clearing the diagnostics. Oh, it's just R. R, okay. Nice, okay. 
So we're just like doing readers. Okay. So, yeah, so this is cool. We're gonna leave this just like for playing around later if we, in case we need like, because like it's getting late, like I've been streaming for like three and a half hours. Like we got it to work. We're just gonna do like caching, caching the other time, some other time. Um, let me clear about print lines. Okay, so we don't need these print lines. Okay, so we don't need like that. Um, okay, so I think we cleared all of the print lines, right? Like, are we using chaining somewhere? Or not? All right, so now that we have this other response, we can also remove this one. All right, so this is it. So this means that if we run it now, we should only see the green stuff, or do we have some print lines somewhere else? There we go. All right. Compare it with... Well, let's shove it in. Let's compare it with what we actually wanted to do. Okay, so let's split like cash currencies into like v3 so like this um like fetch currencies is done uh we probably don't need this right or at least ensure that it's already sorted yeah for this i would need to change the resource um but i don't want to do this yeah, like these two things. I, I'd, I'd much rather do something fun than than things. Actually, actually, we did we did this one. Hold on, let me check with my girlfriend real quick um, if we have any plans because we might, you know, I might I might be able to stream a little bit longer. Let's see, because I really wanted to show you something really cool, and I wanted to stream only for four hours. So, give me a sec.
All right, guys, we have permission to keep going. Um, how many of you guys are even here? Um, where is this thing? Cool. Yeah, don't forget to hit the like button so that some people stumble on the stream. Oh, my cat woke up. He probably wants to go out in a second. It's the one that doesn't like to to sit on my lap. Otherwise, I would I would have shown him to you. Yeah. Okay. So he's quiet for now. Okay. Um. So I kind of want to start using this thing actually, and so for this, I really need to do these two things. Okay. Um. And another thing, but like I don't want to just do this. I also want want to show you something really cool. So let me do these two things then uh like this is gonna be like v3 it's 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 a nice to have anyway okay so we only need to do like these two things uh output to a file and uh read in input from uh main args okay so the first thing that i'm gonna do well let's let's commit it right so um Actually, what we should do just to like save on on the request. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to inject a fake thing right now, uh, like over here. So instead of this, well, no. Yeah, so this is the problem with mutable state. Like, for example, right now, I wanted to create, like, a val fake rate. But, like, just creating this thing is going to, like, fetch um, the rates. And I want to avoid this, okay? So I have to, like, uh, comment it out, just, like, not like this. You know, I have to go, like... It's getting super cold here. Okay. Actually, hold up. I don't have much space between between the green screen and me, so I have to go like this around the microphone. Um, all right, so we're gonna go like this. So this is gonna be new rates, which is going to be new rates like this. And let's see if metals can do. Oh, uh, it can't. Can you do like this? Hold on. It should be able to. Come on, come on, do this for me, please, 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 please. Yes. It tried, it tried, it really tried. Uh, okay, so like this, right? Okay, great. So now I can just like take the rates that we had, um, we had over here. Okay. So this is how we would do like testing, right? Like now I can uh, go back to like running this thing all the time and uh, we're going to get like get rates. In fact, like we might as well like put in the correct rates because we have them, right? So maybe we can, um, I don't know, whatever. I don't want to waste your time. So some, some bogus rates, okay? So um, let's commit this real quick quick so the first thing is to read uh from a file okay so in scala 3 whenever you have like a where's our main so so it used to be like this but you actually don't need to do it like this you can like there are codecs for this stuff so you can just say um like, I don't know, input file path, like in, input file, input file, input file, input file path, okay, whatever, input file path, string, right? And it's just going to compile, it's, it's just going to work, okay? Um, so because we're still hacking, 
I don't think that it can do options. I don't think that it can do options. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have a given instance for prompt string, option string. I don't want to deal with it right now. Um, so we're just going to do like this. Illegal command, more arguments expected. Okay, so now it forces me to pass a string. Uh, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to do this like this. I just want to be able to like, while we're still hacking, um, like while we're still hacking, I want to be able to do this. Okay. Uh, I want to be able to pass the arguments and not to pass arguments. Um, so, uh, we're going to say val, um, input file path equals um, args dot add option add option okay and so now over here we are either going to do so we're going to say input file path and then we're going to do a fold. Actually, we're going to do map, map, get or else. So we're going to do map, path, right? And over here, we're going to like read it from a file. And then we're going to do like get or else, and then we're going to read it from the resources. Uh, maybe like this. Okay. So like over here, we just need to read it from a file and a file path. So now it should be fine because we haven't specified any. So we're not ending up like over here. So this is okay. So uh, how to read stuff from a file. Scala IO source from file. We can specify the encoding, but the default one is actually UTF-8. Um, so we should be fine with uh, path like this. And so, like at the end, we're still gonna do like get lines dot to list, right? And so, we're going to like remove this. Uh, well, actually, hold on. So this is what offered source, offered source, perfect. So we can remove this and remove that and just do like this, okay? So now we can also do this and do that and ta-da. Okay, so in fact, like we might not be able to use add expansion because because there is a second parameter for um for the encoding. Oh no, there is an overload for UTF-8. Okay, so as you can see, like there's an implicit codec that it wants, but for sure it has the companion object UTF-8 codec. Default codec is, wait, where is the implicit for the default one? There we go, strength, no. Where is the default codec? So it says like default over here, but where is like the implicit? Oh, here, low priority. Fallback system code, default char set codec which is applied to char set dot default char set or character set okay so like this is one of those things like all of my computers are are english right so it's all like you know uh, they're all like utf-8 they all use like the uh, english locale and stuff um but i believe like just to be like super bulletproof like sure we should go into our main and we should do something like a uh, character set Was it not character set? Was it like, like this? Okay, there you go. Uh, is there like set default? No. There's no set. Okay. Okay. Well, then then we're not gonna do this. Okay. Cool. So uh, let's um, 
I have some stuff on the desktop. Hold up, let me let me check this real quick. Let me see what I have on the desktop. Yes, blah blah blah. Okay, we should be fine. I'm gonna remove everything from the desktop. All right, so my desktop is currently empty and well, we can ignore like this stuff. So um, I'm going to copy. Okay, so I'm going to copy this uh, input into MNTC users, my name, uh, there's probably desktop, right? Desktop, okay. And I'm gonna call it I'm also gonna call it input, like why not? So just like this. Okay, so there we go, input.csv. So I should probably open it real quick. And like for Spotify, like this is by the way, Vim emulation once it wakes up, there we go, okay. So for Spotify, we're going to say 200 over here, just so that we know the difference, okay? So now I should be able to do, well, I can just do this, right? And I can do MNTC users, agile steel, desktop input.csv. I like that. There we go. Okay, so it worked. It worked, 200, okay. This thing is done, okay? Okay, so the only thing that is left is this output to a file uh, in a local directory. All right. Basically, so instead of, um, So in the end over here, we're doing like pipe rendered. And the rendered gives us a list of string. Let's see. Yeah, so this is where we're doing like this whole thing. So this is where we need to like diverge. So we're going to go over here. So transform is still like everything is fine. So we're going to go over here and go into tap. Okay. And so now we're going to take this thing and we're going to, you know, basically, basically like do all of that stuff. And also like in the end, we're going to tap into like, I'm going to say R and then we're going to take this print line. and go like this. Okay, so there's not even gonna be the result. So it's like this. Okay, and it's uh, like this one is R. And it needs to be like... So, as you can see, like it still behaves exactly the same. So now we kind of like, we diverged the execution. So we just tapped, right? And we're doing this whole printing out on the side, but over here, we also want to continue the pipe. And over here, we're going to like, instead of like going to rendered, we're going to say like rendered for, you know, uh, rendered as CSV. Um, actually, let me, let me have a look at the rendered. So it takes a list of uh, row bodies and produces a list of string. Yeah, it's gonna have, ex it's gonna have exactly the same thing. Right. So maybe just for symmetry, we should do another tap over here. Okay, so we're, we're doing like two taps. Thing. 
things. So we're gonna do this, and then once like the CSV lines will come out, we're still gonna do make string like this. And then we're gonna do like a like a tap, and this is going to be um, uh, like output file, right? Uh, write file. So file, and uh, let's go to rendered and have this thing. Uh, render it as CSV, right? Okay, and this one is going to be write file, which is gonna take, uh, I believe it's like a list of strings, right? No, it's gonna just take a string, 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 and it's gonna be like a unit. Okay, like this. Okay. And maybe we also should have like um like a right to standard out, right? And this is going to be like the sprint line. Um Wait, string. Okay. Right to standard out. And uh, this one is going to be like right to file. Okay. So it's going to like side effect to the console. And then it's also going to write to the file. Okay. So uh, we need to go to like. We need to see if I did like too much in the render it. Probably not. Yeah, so we're gonna have the same like header string. Just like it was commas. And there's like some helper and stuff like over here. We're not gonna need this. So it's just gonna be just gonna be like description and then comma and then like that thing and we're just gonna do like this currency dot euro alphabetically right like currency dot use uh, no spaces right so no spaces like this. This is gonna be the header string. And this is pretty much the buddy string. Okay, so just like that. So this is gonna be a comma, like same here, same here. Like this, like that, no, that. Okay, this format, I need to, I need to have a look what I did there. I think I think we, we still need this format thing. So this helper was just like the rendering, um, but the format we still need. We'll probably inject it later. To do inject. Um, Okay, so no spaces. 
like this um so this is a head of string this is a body string and output raw is just a bunch of strings okay so all we need to do is we need to go like header string body string okay so this is already good so we can pretty much like instead of write to file like for now we can just like write to standard out and see it and there we go so this is going to be our csv so i made us uh there's a space here for some reason space 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 where's the space there there it is all right so this is how the csv is gonna look like this is how the table is gonna look like nice so now we're gonna write it to file and i believe like writing to file like usually you would have like streams and whatever but if you have like something super small then I believe you can also do like Scala IO um, source. Maybe there's like a write file or something. Is there no? Maybe there's like a target. I'm sure that there's like there. There should be like a one liner. Um, uh, by the way, guys, don't forget to hit the like button again. Um, so, Scala, write string to file. One statement, Tw 2011. Uh, okay, so this is like Java stuff, right? We could do that. There's probably, there's probably something built in. I don't remember that there was like, I mean, we can do this, right? But the point is not to figure it out, right? There are millions of ways to like write to a file. I just thought there would be also a way like in Scala, like some tiny, tiny wrapper that, that at least has like the, the default char set. Alvin Alexander, by the way, has like a shit ton of tutorials. Like he, like, like the amount of tutorials that he produced, like he probably has forgotten like more stuff than most developers know. <laughs> um, and also how he has like for sure, like wrappers for this, but like, isn't there something in the standard library? I mean, technically, this is like a one method call, but still. Yes, it seems like like this is the best way. Yeah, whatever. Let's grab this thing. This is not the point. Okay, so. like this okay so obviously we also need the destination the destination is always going to be into the like local directory right so it's going to be well output output dot csv okay and this is the contents and the contents is going to be string. Um, there we go. So now it already ran, which means that there is already a file here called output.csv. So if we bat into it, there we go. Also, if we just get into it. 
Okay, so there is no, there is no, uh, there is no line end over here. So this is something that we actually need to check uh, to test. So let's move it to MNTC uh, users um, agile steel desktop. I actually want like open with LibreOffice. Lib All right, uh, Unicode, yes, yes. There is something wrong here. Okay, so this was like one, two, three, comma, four, five, six, dot, seven, nine. Okay, so this is a problem. So we should output our stuff with quotes. So important point actually so what we should do over here is quote 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 here 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 and here and the same thing for the body here here, hold up, this is not a raw string, so we need like this. Like this, like that, like that, like that, like that. Did I do it there as well? Okay, I did. All right. Um, by the way, it, it seems like it overrides, it just overrides the file. Yes, it does. Okay, so move like this, uh, ba, 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 like that. Okay, so open with LibreOffice. Okay, much better. See? much better and it seems like it has figured out the total right but like something deep inside of me doesn't like the fact that there is no empty line at the end like whenever you write to files it's always good to have an empty line you see this thing means that there's like no uh, line and character in the end um, which is with it which doesn't seem to be like an issue oh I moved it <laughs> damn it All right <laughs> bad error um, bad error <laughs> I read like bad error um, let me actually show you what I mean well, we need to like get ignore this file. Um, I'll put that CSV. Um, come on, why can't you open it? It's still there. Only because it's get ignored doesn't mean that it's not there. Maybe there's just a parameter in cat. Like maybe we should have an empty line. Well, we can kind of do this here. So, and there's also an overloaded version where we can do this. Right? So now if we cat into it, see like there, this character is not there anymore, but now there's like an empty line. So if we bat into it, we're gonna see, see like bat doesn't show it. So if we move it, well, let's actually copy it. 
to dance up. This is sort of like one of those like when you're old as hell, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, one of those things like whenever you write to files, it's like some tools work better if there is an empty line at the end of the file. Okay, it's so, like most tools are going to be fine with both versions, um, but shit, I shouldn't have opened it because maybe Sublime did something. Probably didn't, but like just in case, let's go like this. Uh, LibreOffice. Yeah. So it's, it's better like just in case to have an empty line. Okay. Cool. I'm actually thinking maybe it's better to have the total at the top. We can do this for V3. Maybe let's do this now real quick. So uh, we can, um, by the way, for this one, it's better to have like to have this, right? Just for it. So, um, What did I want to do? I wanted to go and first of all say that we did this, right? Okay, and I also want to do. Um, well, actually, I'm gonna move total to the top only in the file, right? Move total to the top only in the file. Well, actually, we don't even need to mention this. Uh, I can just go. Uh, over here actually where is the total oh it's the last line in the body right so we pretty much can do the thing that i did over there with uh here All right so now we can do had a string total and then body body without total like this okay so it probably already ran which means I can copy yeah I can copy and we can open it with LibreOffice Yeah, there we go. So the totals at the top. Cool. All right. So we're pretty much done for today. But for those of you who actually stuck around, um, um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. So first of all, like let's um, like let's commit this thing. Like notice that, right? Like we were committing all of this time. Oh, uh, actually, we have this tiny thing. So uh, let's also inject this one. So this is a decimal format, which is a uh, number format, which is format. Okay, so uh, we're gonna inject this, right? Format. Okay, so This is exactly why I always like do this for for scripts. Um, okay, so we need to go like this, and and here as well. Let's go very quick, come on! And we just need to carry the function over here. You guys are not asking questions, so. Okay. F. There we go. All right. So, like this. Okay. So now we don't need this. Okay. Cool. Um, 
And by the way, now that now that the scope is a little bit larger, we can actually go like this. Uh, did I specify the types? I did just for you guys, okay? So this is like an option of string. And um, and this is a format. Okay, there we go. Um, let's also do like and main. Main. Okay. So, like this stuff doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so notice how like all of this time I didn't push. Like, are, are you guys actually still here? Hold on. Let me let me check. Before I go and explain a bunch of things to you that actually don't don't matter. Okay, you you're here. Cool. A couple of you are still here. So dealing with environment environment variables. So if I push, if I commit this now, like even though it's like, um, like who cares? It's just a token for some random API that we just grabbed it. You can grab yourself, it's free, right? You don't need to like steal mine. But um, where is it? What the hell is it? API, API token, there we go, API. So this is my API token. There are many ways to deal with tokens. Like this is my favorite one, okay? So, I'm going to I'm going to show you an alias. I have an alias called DI. Okay, it's an alias that does like echo dot env, which is like just this one word into a file called called dot envrc, and it creates an empty file called dot env, and it does dear env allow. So I'm going to do like all of these things like manually. Okay, so I'm going to echo like dot env into a file called dot envrc, which doesn't exist. Okay, so as you can see, like dear env said hey envrc file change i'm gonna explain what dear env is in just a second okay it says like hey this file changed like are you sure uh i'm not done yet so i'm also gonna attach a file called dot env okay so if i bat into like envrc you're gonna see okay like there's just only like this one line dot env and if i bat into dot env you're gonna see that it's empty okay so now i'm gonna say dear env allow okay so what happens, like Dear ENV, I have a video about it, you might want to check it out. Dear ENV is a tool that can load environment variables uh, and do like, it can basically run commands per directory. So it's hooked into my shell, right? So if you were to open uh, my ZSHRC, and if I say, like somewhere I say, okay, if I have Dear then please do this, Dear ENV hook into ZSH. And so what it does is that every time I switch into some directory, ZSH tells dear ENV, hey, we're switching to some directory, or you know, the directory was reloaded. Dear ENV goes like, oh, cool, is there a file called .envrc? And if there is, it will start running commands in, in, in VRC, right? So for example, if I echo, echo blah, you know, and I, I just add it to like .envrc, all right, dear ENV tell me, will tell me, hey, it changed, so I'm gonna allow it. And so now like every time I go into the directory, it's gonna echo blah, right? So if I go out, see, it says unloading. And if I go into mining calc, it's going to do blah. So in fact, I'm going to open like dot and VRC. I'm going to remove blah. Okay. So this is just a helper function in there that says, okay, like if you have a dot and V file, then you can put like foo equals blah. And I'm just going to load it. So, right. So now if I do like echo, echo foo bar. And if I do one and I press enter, and I do like echo foo, it's gonna say one. So this is gonna be our token, right? So this is gonna be like API token. We have only one, so we're gonna call it like this. It's a convention to call, you know, to use the um, capital letters, okay? Okay, so it's gonna be like that. Uh, I don't even think that we need quotes, right? But I'm gonna use quotes anyway. So now we have, you know, the API token. So, if we go over here, global git ignore. So if I go into like uh, git ignore dot, I think oh, I thought, no, hold on. Config git ignore. This is the default git ignore. Like somewhere, somewhere in here, I have like global ignore for dot nvrc and dot env. I'm I'm also going to add it here so that you guys can play it, play around with it. So um, 
click git ignore so i'm just going to add dot nvrc and dot nv as well okay even though like so now like uh i need to not i need to remember that we're actually running over here and we have we're limited into um, okay so if i remove like this uh fake rates over here and if I these ones and there are many libraries that, that do this but there's a default way to do this like, there's like system get get nv get nv okay and i'm just gonna say like api token right so it will read this th this thing from the environment right and it will run it okay so now like this thing is still gonna work now right so it's gonna do like this whole you know api request and blah blah, blah. it found the token okay so i'm not done by questions so far so now i can push this thing right so like this is done like like no changes anymore right so i'm just gonna do like g can okay right so if i if i if i show you what i did in this in this commit you're not going to see the token any, any, anywhere right because it's, because we're never committing committing this token it's in my dot dot env so it's never going to see it's never going to see github right all of that stuff blah 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 okay so this is everything that we did today okay so i'm actually going to push this i'm actually going to do one more thing before i push it okay but but i could push it now okay i, I want to do one more thing so do you have any questions so far because i'm going to show you like one thing now that is going to blow your mind let me drink some water don't forget to hit the like button by the way so yeah any questions about your env ask now All right, it seems like there are no questions, but I need you to confirm that you guys are actually still here before I show you the next thing. I need at least one of you to say that you're still here. I'm not gonna show you the next thing until I know that somebody's here is watching. Like because I don't I don't trust this thing here, this concurrent viewers thing. Uh, I never trust this thing because it's like 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 very often it's had like zero, but but there were actually people watching. So let me actually see if we can raid somebody. No no no. Oh, we can't. So, all right, nice, cool. Okay, are, are you ready to get your mind blown? So, um, a couple of, like maybe months ago, okay? Uh, I was watching a uh, live stream. Like I'm very interested in DevOps. Uh, I was watching a stream called, um, uh, the alt f4 string okay this one okay so um and he was using a a a tool called uh doppler okay i have an affiliate link for doppler by the way if you go like if you see like at the like at the bottom of the screen like in the middle uh if you go to like doppler.devinsidey.com you're gonna see cre you're gonna get like credits right so if i go like doppler.devinsidey.com uh you're gonna get credits 
right? It's like, hey, like it's an affiliate link, right? You get like hundred bucks, right? It's limited to like five people. Okay, uh, I highly recommend that you set up, uh, you know, you connect it with like GitHub, for example. Let me explain to you what Doppler is. Okay, so basically, he was using Doppler, and I was like, oh my god, this solves a problem that I didn't even know I had. Okay, so. Uh, and I even reached out to them and probably I'm going to make a, a couple of videos um, for them uh, because I'm very excited about it. The only, the only issue I have with it is that like, um, I, I'll explain it a bit later. Okay. So what Doppler does is basically Doppler is like a password manager, but instead of managing passwords, it's managing, it manages all kinds of secrets. So it basically manages not only secrets, but also the entire configuration of your application, right? So whether you need like ports, or API tokens, all kinds of these things, right? They're all inside of Doppler. Okay, so uh, let me go real quick, uh, do this. Uh, so I'm going like to doppler.com. I just want to make sure, you know, I'm going to like sign in with my, with my GitHub, blah, blah, blah. I just want to make, I just want to make sure that it doesn't go to some default project. Um, Hold on. Okay, so um, it has a it has a concept of uh, workspaces, like workplaces, right? So basically, like if you're working for multiple clients, like each client will have like its own workplace. For example, I work for Avanstay. If we were using it, there would be a workplace called Avanstay. I actually have created one just to play around with it. So um, there's already a workspace called Dev inside you, but you know, we can create another one, but actually we're not going to. So I'm going to go back. So this is like a dashboard. And over here, I'm going to choose Dev inside you. Okay. So there's like an example project. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project and I'm going to call it like um, money, uh, why doesn't it allow me to use capital letters? Whatever. Uh, Money Calc, right? This is the this is the name of this project. Okay. So this is how I call it, Money Calc. Okay. So it has like environments, right? So for production, staging, development, but we don't have any of them. Okay. So we're actually gonna like remove all of them. Uh, dev. What? Uh, are you sure this will permanently delete? Uh, all configs, blah blah blah. It's empty. Come on, delete it. Okay. Um, staging. What do you mean? STG. STG. Okay, some bug, I guess. Or maybe, maybe there is no way to delete them. Slug does not match. Okay, I guess it's a bug. Okay, whatever. So the point is like, you can create your own environment, right? So create environment. I'm gonna call it like local. Well, actually we can pretty much use production because production is like, like for, this is a bad example because we don't have any, any distinction between production and not production, right? Uh, so I'm gonna say local. And um, slug is gonna be like LOC. Just as an example. Okay, so now I'm going to go here, okay, and I'm going to say, well, add the first secret. And it can even import secrets from a .env file, right? So this is like import, like, you know, from env, blah, blah, blah. So I can actually go uh, wherever my env file is. I can just like copy this, right? And I just like throw it over here. It's something like Secret Vault, which is... Um, very very optimized for um, uh, for DevX for developer experience. Okay, like the industry standard tool is called Vault, B A U L T. Okay, uh, but the developer experience there is just horrible. Okay, so like this is a token. You can also say like reveal all secrets and whatever, and you can like reference secrets and whatever. In fact, like what I'm doing right now is actually not not correct. Okay, I, I'm going to show you why. Okay, so within within this workspace, which is dev inside you, I'm actually going to go and uh, I want to go back to just like the workspace. Uh, well, save. Okay, save and it allows me to like copy paste this to other environments and whatever, but I actually don't need the other one. So I'm just going to save. Okay. 
So, um, it says like one secret mi missing. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. Maybe it will allow me to actually delete it now. Delete STG. Yeah. So it's probably like once it deletes one, it cannot delete the second one because of some JavaScript thing. Yeah, see, so if I like reload the page, I'm sure it's gonna allow me to um, to delete the production one. Yeah, see, just a JavaScript bug. Okay, so we only have the local. So what I should be doing actually is I should, well, let's actually delete this example project. Um, and delete, yes, the example project, okay. Okay. So what I should be doing is I should create a project for like, I mean, Dev Inside is like a, uh, is a very, is a very kind of special case. But basically, we can, uh, like what I would do is I will just say, like this is just like APIs, like external APIs, like third party, third, um, is third party one word, or like, or like two words. Okay, it's like two words. Okay. So like third party APIs, okay? And we're gonna say um, third party API, APIs, whatever, okay? So it's just like uh, all kinds, all kinds of secrets and tokens from external APIs, okay? Create project, okay? And over there, I might actually, well, probably like because it's third-party APIs, probably not gonna have development, right? But maybe we will. Let's 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 keep it like this, okay? So what I want to do is I want to go to production over here, right? Because this is like my production token, right? Add first secret, import secrets. I believe I still have it here, right? Import secrets, blah blah blah. Okay, save. Um, let's actually save it everywhere, okay? And so what I can do now from my other project, right? From Money Calc. I actually can reference it, right? So I can just do dollar and then uh, probably like production, right? So like this, okay? Save. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I didn't want to branch. Why would I want to branch? Oh yeah, okay. No, it's it's just fine. Like I don't have any branches. Okay. So branches is basically um, like imagine that this is like shared within your team, and like there's like hundreds of tokens over here. Like one, like each team member can just go like this, and can just say duplicate, right? And then it's gonna be just like Vlad, right? Which is my name, and that was like my thing, right? And now it has like root stuff. So if I change it over there, it would be applicable over here as well. But I don't need it. Okay, so now over here, like, first of all, I can delete .nv, right? I'm just going to, well, actually, I'm just going to do it here, right? So remove .nv star, okay? So now I can actually even, well, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it like in the git ignore for you, right? Remember, I added like them to the git, uh, git ignore. I'm going to keep them for you if you want to play around. Okay, so now like if I run money calc is is gonna say well there's no there's no uh, token, uh, no API key found in request, which is exactly what's what's up, right? So uh, I already have Doppler installed. Like uh, the the package manager of my choosing is Nix, so I just did uh, this Nix packages Doppler. Okay, so it's just a CLI. Okay, so uh, Doppler hyphen v like this is the, the version. Okay. So now if I do like Doppler login and I'm going to scope this login like just to this, um, well actually like this is my dev inside your machine so I don't even need to scope it but so I could scope it to the, my root folder but what I'm saying is that you could even like login per folder, right? Login means workspace. Remember like I have like multiple workspaces over here? But like you can have only one workspace per login, okay? So I'm gonna scope it to the current folder which is like dev money calc. Okay. So uh, it says like open the authorization page in your browser. Like 
I'm going to say yes, but I don't think that it will work because I'm in WSL. Okay? So it says, like, unable to launch a browser, blah, blah, blah. So basically, I go to this link, right, which is over here. Okay, I paste the authentication code, which is that, that thing. All right. Okay. And now I pick the workspace, which is this one. And I can name my token somehow. That's it. Finish login. Okay. Now the rest is just like blah, blah, blah. Okay. It already worked. Okay. So now if I, if I run like Doppler, um, I believe configure, right? It shows me like some, def some, some information that says, okay. So I believe it can be like self-hosted and stuff, but it doesn't need to be. So like, this is like where it gets stuff from, uh, from, from this dashboard. And there's like some, some token over here. Okay. So what I can do now is I can say, well, show me the projects. Well, there you go. There's a project called mining calc and there is a project called third party APIs. There's a description. I didn't have a description for mining calc. Okay. So, uh, now you can say Doppler, Doppler, um, environments right, for the project money calc. And it's going to say, well, you only have the local environment over there. And I'll say, well, okay, well, show me the secrets for the environment. I believe this is how, I'm not sure if it, this is how it's done, but like this. So probably not like this. Hold on. Doppler secrets. I oh, no, no, no. I, I remembered. Okay. So if you do like this Doppler environments thing, like see, like it shows you the configs within the environment. Okay, so you don't need to specify the environment when you do this. You need to specify the config. Okay, so the config is like LOC, right? Hold on. What did it say? Unknown flag project. Okay, hold on. Secrets like this. There we go. Okay, so. Um, exactly. Correct. So again, like Doppler projects is like this. Now Doppler environments for the project. So you see there's a project. I didn't list the configs, right? Okay. So Doppler configs for, for the project money money calc okay so this is the one that i wanted to show because it shows like okay the environment is loc but the config is also loc right so like this thing over here right so this is the workspace this is the project this is the environment right uh, loc and these are the configs remember you can have like many configs okay and so now like with this thing about the secrets right right i can say okay well show me the secrets uh, show me them in like raw. Okay. And you see like the raw. Okay. This is just like a reference. Okay. Or we can say, well, show me like names only or like only names. Okay. So now the point is like, remember how we did like B run money calc, right? And it said, Hey, you know, you don't have the API key. Well, now I can do Doppler run and I can say, um, project money calc config loc probably it's optional because there's only one config okay and now i can do hyphen hyphen and now i can do b run money calc right so like this this command and so now it will inject them in such a way that it's that it's visible uh, only there okay it doesn't expand the aliases this is one of the things so i need to actually do bloop Okay, so it worked, right? So it injected in such a way that the the key actually never saw the file. The file system actually never saw the key. Uh, does Doppler have access management as well? Yeah, this is like my only problem with them, right? So I talked to them, right? And I was like, guys, it's too expensive. <laughs> Can you please do something about it? So like, again, like if you go to like doppler.devinsidey.com, uh, you're going to get like 100 bucks credit, right? And you can apply the credit to whatever workspace you want, okay? So here's the thing. Um, this is like the only thing that I don't like about them. 
So if you're just like starting out uh, up to a team, like, so it's free, right? It's free, right? Blah, blah, blah. And by the way, they have integrations with like Doppler, Kubernetes. They can sync, uh, sync the whole thing to um, something like the parameter store in the AWS, for example, right? And then if you have a team of um, up to five people, then it's free, okay? And you get like all of these things. However, like as soon as you want like project permissions, uh, user access controls, uh, environment permissions, which is something that is like super, super necessary, right? Like, as you can see, like, this is like the first question, right? Then it costs like 18 bucks a month per user, right? And this is just like, I find this to be a lot. And I really, I was on the phone and I was like, guys, come on. Like, you cannot have like a secrets manager, like a password manager, right? Without, um, you know, without this stuff. So this is basically like, you know, this is like level one, right? It's not level three, you know, like the first one is free, then you have like developer and then you have team. No, like this is like an absolute prerequisite. I was like, come on, just just like make this one like a little bit more expensive, like make it like $8 or $9, right? Like whatever, and just put like these three things in there. You can move, move out some other things like, I don't know, smart alerts or whatever, you know? So you need like, you need, you need some, we need secrets referencing and we need like these three things. And like, I would be ready to pay money for it, but like 18 bucks is just too much for me, okay? So let me show you like one last thing, okay? So you can also run like Doppler configure, okay? And then we'll, no, not Doppler configure, Doppler setup, right? And it will ask you like, okay, so basically it asks you about the defaults for this directory. And you actually can, and you should, uh, called, I believe it's probably just like, Jesus. Um, I believe it's just that Doppler. Um, and it's probably, I don't remember how to do this. Um, so this is the file that you will like share with your team. And by the way, like, so every project should be, every, should be a microservice. Okay. Um, Doppler project file. Okay, so this is actually even more than... Hold on, what is this? Hold on. Okay, so this is not what I wanted. Uh, I wanted just like the basic. Um, here, right? You just like have like this thing in there. Copy and I'll like paste it in there. It was dot, dot Doppler, that, right? Dot Doppler, I oh am yeah, Doppler dot YAML. Okay, so hold on. Doppler.yaml. Okay. So now we can say the project is like money calc. Right? Money calc and the default environment is like so now if I run like Doppler setup, it will ask me like, hey, do you want to get them from file? I'm gonna be like, yeah. Okay. And so now if I do like Doppler configure, it's gonna show me that my default project is money calc and my config is LOC in this directory again, right? So now, like, I remember how we did, like, this whole thing. So now, like, by default, I can remove, like, all of that stuff. Okay? And it's just going to work. Okay? And if I wanted to, right, like, I would do, like, like, here, right? I would do, like, config or just, like, hyphen C. And I would do, like, PRD, for example, for production. And all of a sudden, like, I'm running with all the production keys. Right, we don't have an environment for production, but but it will work like this. Okay, a super awesome tool. Okay, so yeah, and it also works with SBT as well, right? It's just that SBT SBT takes some time to start up. All right, so you run SBT like this, and now you can do run, and it will work.
So it's very good for me, like as a streamer, like for example, the next time that we're going to work with, um, um, you know, with like this money API, you know, uh, we like you will, I will never have a, 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 an opportunity to like even dox myself, right? So because the, the token is now nowhere, it's not on my file system, it never sees the file system, it's not in a .env file, it's nowhere, right? It's only there. Obviously, if I, if I like force it to show it to me, it will show it to me. <laughs> Thanks, man. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, I haven't streamed for a while. Um, how's, how's life? And by the way, we're, we're pretty much done for today. Okay. So I'm actually going to like leave this Doppler file in there. Yeah. Because like, if you're not using Doppler, you can just ignore it, right? So uh, this is a work in progress. So we're gonna do unwhip, right? So unwhip is like undo the work in progress commit. So it basically like searches for the last work in progress commit and just remo removes it, All right? And we're gonna commit it and we're gonna say, we're gonna call it like day two or V2, day two, okay? Okay, so this is what we did today. Git push, GH, RVW, which is an alias for like opening it in the browser and let's have a look. All right, commits, day two. This is what we did today. Okay. We added to the git ignore output CSV dot env or CN dot env. We added like these things to the Scala FMT thing. We removed the explicit nulls because we don't need this. We added like these two libraries, which we should actually move them to dependencies, but whatever, we're just hacking here. Um, added this like currency fetcher. Did a bunch of changes to the main. And um, yeah, we, we added like this rates thing. Yeah, that's it. So we're pretty much done for today. In 975, when the US left Vietnam, the first thing that the Vietnamese did was execute every professor, every scientist, and executive students in each class. I hope so this doesn't happen in Pakistan. What what do you mean? How how what what what, what how can I help you? It's quite well. I've been enjoying myself. Oh, Proven a new theory with new physics with Joseph George and myself are proving the science community could be wrong. Interesting. All right, guys. So we're pretty much done. If you have any questions, um, we're good. So this tool, like right now, is at the at the stage where where it's actually usable. You know, so. I'm very happy about it, so I can actually now calculate my expenses. So like V, th the things that we have for V3, you know, they're just like nice to have. Um, yeah, so if you want the Doppler cre credits, by the way, go to like doppler.dynamitesidy.com. Uh, but you don't, you don't need the credits unless you go to this, uh, you know, um, crazy level. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, like if you missed the beginning of the stream, I actually have uh, I actually have a vacation. So for the next two weeks, um, I might stream a little bit more. Like in the second week, I'm planning to go somewhere. I don't know where yet, but I will. Uh, but in the first week, uh, like I need to create a couple of videos, and so probably like I, I cannot guarantee this, but probably I will work on them on stream. Okay, uh, so I will uh, stream like sporadically, random times, random length. Um, stuff like this. Um, yeah, okay. I think I really need to go. We did, like, I wanted to do four hours. We did, like, four hours and 45 minutes. Uh, thank you for putting the information in the chat window with my traumatic brain injury. This is the only way I can do it. Cannot use the spelling voice only. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, all right, guys. I really need to go. Uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed the stream. I enjoyed hanging out with you. Uh, I love building projects uh, on stream. 
hopefully in the future I'm gonna do this more often. Um, we'll see. All right. Peace.